you guys would sit in my office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you would watch videos of somebody playing it on YouTube. Yeah. And then I'd have to page back into my office from the front desk and be like, Fuck today. Tomorrow comes movies. This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, Spartan 117. And you're tuned in to Tomorrow Comes the Movies. Finish the fight. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Tomorrow Comes Movies, the podcast that talks beyond movies. We talk video games, not music, comics, television, Star Wars, pop culture, Funko, and much more. As always, your host are the Patrick and... Carissa. To the Grinch who sang Galileo. Episode 55. You didn't like it last time you wanted me to do it higher. Galileo! If you, you just... So if you just lift your soft palate a little bit. I don't know what bit, that means. Your soft palate is in the back of your mouth. So if you use your tongue and put it at the top of your roof, you can see how it's hard. Okay. And then move. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did better last time, you I know. You did, you did. Galileo! Okay. Oh, there you go. There That's you go. the difference. There you go. All right, there you go. So to the Grinch who's saying, Galileo! There you okay. go. I'm done doing that. All right. I was hoping you would do it instead of me. I didn't want to do it. Why? So we are back. I hope everyone enjoyed the Steve Downs interview, the voice of Master Chief. That was our Black Friday special. That, that was, was free. Free 99. Free 99. And if you have it, you need to really get on that. It's a great interview. I think it's a fantastic interview. It's one of our best. Crazy. We talked to Master Chief. Yeah, I know. Let's address real quick that oh when we did... Oh my god. I hate you so much. Right I know now. we talked a little bit about it in the prior episode, but... I, I couldn't get this out of my mind because we have some other stuff that's coming up, content. And I think you learned your lesson because during the shout out, you thought he was done. And then he would say, finish the fight. But you did. Tomorrow comes the movies. And then it goes a little silent. And you're like, oh, finish the fight. <laughs> and I did edit a little bit of, a little bit of it out. And then I was like, well, there's not, there's not more I can do to it. But I think it's hilarious. I hate to. It will live on. Actually, it's uh, going to be the uh, opening for this one, actually. Shut up. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> anyways anyways uh this is kind of a special thing for you you just hit your one year anniversary I, mark i officially over the past weekend um i officially hit my one year congratulations yeah. thank you thank you when you took over you're like i don't think i'm gonna be doing this very long i think uh did you have any idea <laughs> did you know what you were doing you're like I, I don't know no like at the time when i took over i'm like well pat needs somebody and pat Ma- pat man pat man <laughs> Patrick. Batman and Carissa. <laughs> I'm dun, like, dun, dun, you know how dun. like you know how like Gotham needs you. You know what I mean? Like I'm like Patrick needs you. I need you need to fill in for someone. You know what? I never did. You imagined. put out the Patman uh, signal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it's interesting. It's it's crazy to think. You know, I know we hit our fiftieth couple episodes back, but like officially, like officially, last episode, episode fifty four, was my fiftieth. Mm, wow. So exciting. It's very exciting. Crazy. It's been a year. I know. We got what a year. 50 more to go to 100. That's, uh, we got 45 to go to 100. Well, I'm talking about like your, oh. your 100. But I overall, like yeah, we got 45. Yeah, we got 45. Counts. Well, some breaking news happened once again. Let's address it on the what's going on. Uh, got a text from my boy Kyle. Shout out to Kyle, who's uh, never listened to this podcast, but he's somehow always looking at the news and letting me know what's going on. <laughs> He listened. Man, ever since I got in that car accident, I've been like more savage to him uh, in text. Let's not talk about the car accident. <laughs> uh, no, but he, you know, shout out to him because he sent me this information as we were watching a show, getting ready to record. Daredevil is officially canceled. After three seasons, it's done. Boom. It joins fellow heroes for hire, Iron Fist and Luke Cage. And this isn't our first time that we've had a break in news. No. You discovered, I think last time, Luke yeah. Cage... And then uh, Iron Fist would follow suit, and now, without the suit, <laughs> Daredevil's going with him. So, what are we bracing ourselves for? Punisher Season 2, that's it? Yeah. Jessica Jones Season, season 4. Three. Oh, Season 3, shit. Yeah. Yeah, Season 3, it's over. Yeah. None of them have ever made it to 4. No. Wow. Oh, I'm devastated. I think Charlie really Cox sad. is, is if you think that Robert Downey Jr. is the definite Iron Man, Chris Evans is the definite... Captain America, you know, if you think Michael Keenan is the definite Batman, <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Charlie Cox is in that same bracket. He's definite the man without fear. He's Daredevil. He yeah. did it so well. And we're we're slowly getting through season three, and we will review it sometime next year. No, I'm just I don't know when we're gonna review it, but we're getting through it right now. I don't know why I say like it's like hard to get through. It's really good. It's really no. But she's so, bracing herself I for really cancellation. Am. I think because I knew it was gonna be canceled, so I was like savoring every episode. And in a sense, I'm torturing Patrick and making him watch it like. It's, One episode a week kind of thing. It's very scary. Because I knew, I knew it was going to be canceled. I knew it. I knew it. If they had already canceled the other two, you know, and I know a lot of people were a little hesitant about this third season, and even someone even mentioned to me, like, well, they're going backwards, aren't they? He's not in his costume anymore. And I'm like, no, they're not going backwards. I go, he's a broken Daredevil. He's a broken Matthew Murdoch. Yeah, so if you haven't seen it, then so if you it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a reveal. But they said in the tra- and then showed it in the trailers. You know, he wasn't in his costume. But anyways, this is a I'm this a is sad. devastating. This is when we know that the Netflix Marvel era is over. Yeah, they're just gonna push out season two of Punisher, season three of uh, Jessica Jones. It's and over. Deuces. It's over. Yeah. Who's gonna defend the city now? <laughs> Everyone from New York is done. Is it time to cancel the Netflix subscription? Yes. I'm not going to yeah, cancel it. I am. It, it's getting close. It's getting very close to canceling. No, not really. It's just more disappointing because it's it's we haven't really got any closure with Iron Fist or no. Luke Cage. We haven't no. finished season three. Can I, I can only imagine that one's going to leave it with the door wide open as well. But Disney Plus, the new streaming service, we've heard nothing. Are they going to pick up any of these shows? Please, like I said previously on other episodes, buy the seasons off Netflix. Yeah. Throw them the money, bring them all over to your streaming service so that we can get new seasons of Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. Because this is a huge shame. Like, shows that get canceled, this these are not shows that get canceled. But maybe, maybe, is it superhero fatigue? You think maybe? Is, no. Or do you think, like, we have talked about that the Marvel... How is it superhero fatigue when these two, these three now... These three pro- these three properties literally had some of their best work. It's not superhero fatigue. I mean, yeah, because if you think about it, like, look at all the stuff that's coming out. But Marvel may be fatiguing, though, because maybe the movies Patrick. are overshadowing these films. Or these Get series. out of here with this nonsense. Well, think about it. They were originally in the same universe. And since there's a big disconnect between Marvel Studios and Marvel Entertainment, which handles the TV side, the, the like, um similar universe is slowly stretching out where it's no longer really connected. It's just barely connected like in 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 theory, but they don't acknowledge things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cuz obviously if, if if they did, there'd be some Thanos snap repercussions. But maybe that's what it is. I can watch Black Panther like we've said many times. I can watch Black Panther in 2 hours I know what's going on. Daredevil takes a while to get going, but that's the difference between TV. If you separate the two, you understand a little bit more. And I think that the series do a better job of building characters. Yes, uh, agreed. I just think that sometimes that the villain problem, which they stretch a little too long, I don't like that. I think you can agree to that as well. Yeah. Outside of Wilson Fisk and maybe Kilgrave from Jessica Jones, those are the two. Those are the two uh, villains that I actually like, and I'm okay if they stretch it out. Now I know you may not feel the same way with Kilgrave. You got tired of him saying Jessica. <laughs> yes, I did get tired of saying that. But uh, R.I.P. to uh, Daredevil. But if any show gets saved, I'm not even kidding. If any show gets saved out of this Marvel Netflix debacle, it'll be Daredevil. And it's not, so. What do you mean? Why do you say not? Why, why would it not come back? If they canceled it once, why would they bring it back? Like, psych, we're joking, we're going to bring it back. Disney Plus, I'm saying. Oh. What if Disney Plus brings it back? That's well, the then w- they have to bring them all back. They're, they're, they're connected. Well, if they just bring Daredevil back, will that satisfy? Well, okay. No, I want them all and run. No, no, no. Okay, what is this Pokemon? I gotta catch them. Yeah, all. like <laughs> yeah, I need to catch them all. Charmander. You well, which I mean? one would uh, Daredevil be if they were Pokemon? Would it be, you know, would it be Charmander? Huh. That's the most popular, right? I think Charmander of the three starters. So Daredevil. You think be... Charmander's the po- popular? Out of the three starters, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander, because it turns into Charizard. That is true. So I would say that Daredevil is uh. Charmander. Who is fire? Bulbasaur? That would be Luke Cage. Okay, and then Jessica Jones, Squirtle? Well, there's only three. You can only pick three. We're going to laugh at this one, but so Jessica Jones would be three? 
if if that was the other starter. Well, you didn't tell me Jessica Jones was involved. I thought we were picking out of the three that have been canceled. Oh shit. Okay, okay. So then, so then Iron Fist would be Squirtle. Squirtle. Yeah. I think you might want to switch those two around. I think Squirtle's a little bit more popular than uh, than uh, that's my opinion. I think I think it's a little bit more popular. But I was gonna make a joke that Daredevil's Charmander, mm-hmm. Jessica Jones is Squirtle, Luke Cage is Bulbasaur. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Iron Fist is Pikachu. <laughs> uh, no, he can't be Pikachu. He could be like Psyduck or something. Psyduck. <laughs> wow, degrading him down. So what's Punisher? What is Punisher? What Poliwag? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, this, that's devastating news. We're getting a lot of devastating news recently. You know, you don't sound very devastated. I am. I really no. this season. I had said this to you. I'm, I'm like, like choked up over here. I'm like ready to cry. No, I, I was telling you when we were watching Daredevil. That's why I'm like, can we can we wrap this up? Come on. Let's go, let's go. I'm over here like I'm in a jazz concert. Like, no, I'm like I was like cool beans. I was like savoring it because I knew I knew this was the last one. I I, I knew it once once <laughs> they canceled the other two. I'm like they're gonna cancel him next. And it well, just, yeah, he's he's the next one. He's the next one that had a show debut. <laughs> yeah, and they and the reason why is they dropped it so fast after mm. Iron Fist. Like normally they give they give each other some breathing room and time to like everyone to watch, and literally within a month. We get Daredevil. Like some there's mm. there's something weird there, right? Like that like intuition that you have, like you know something is gonna happen and it's not gonna be a good something. That felt like every time Thanos came on screen on Infinity War, I knew something was gonna happen. <laughs> oh. But alright, so uh we'll have to keep an eye on this Daredevil. I'm sad, yeah, I'm sad too. So let's move over I to I don't hear any sadness in your voice. It's the it's it's the best seasonal and I and we've seen Luke I'm Cage looking is at sweet, handsome Charlie Cox right now. We need to meet him again now. Oh yes, I do. All right, so like not just me and Charlie this time. I don't want you in the photo. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool beans. All right, so let's end that. You just not me. <laughs> just not me. Yeah, here. let's move over to the TV side now, Carissa. I sent you an email so you can look at the pictures of Sweet Tooth. Now, Sweet Tooth is a property that will be getting an adaptation from Hulu and with help from Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. Now, Sweet Tooth is a comic. It is written and drawn by Jeff Lemire. Mm-hmm. Lemire. Now, he's done work on the uh, Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. He's done a lot of... He used to do DC. Now, he's this, doing Marvel. Is this is Vertigo? This is DC Vertical, yes. Okay. 100%. So, yeah. You, yeah, the, the wheels start turning. Like, wait, yeah. Iron Man, Robert, Robert Downey Jr. is involved in this? So, Hulu is working on this to make it into a show. And Team Downey, which is Robert Downey Jr.'s company with his wife, Susan. That's adorable. It's a great name, Team that Downey, right? That is so cute. They are producing this. Now, this is a DC and vertical property. So, let me tell you a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. It's about a young man named Gus. Now, Gus isn't normal. He has antlers on his head. So, he has like deer type antlers. He is a rare breed of human-animal hybrid. No, so, he's not a centaur. I knew no. you were going to say that. You, you thought the Harry Potter thing. I got, like, centaur. I got all smiling right now. I'm like, so what you're trying to say. Okay. Now, Gus was sheltered from the world. Okay. The world he is... he weird. Okay, wow. Really? With the bullying right now? I'm just kidding. Uh, bullying. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, well, I don't know. I haven't read this comic. Have okay. you? Okay. No. You would have told me if you did. Oh, yeah, exactly. So he's sheltered from the world. Now, this world is a post-apocalyptic setting. Now, apparently, a pandemic, from what I've read, uh, destroyed the world a decade ago. Now, Gus embarks on an adventure to find answers. So, uh, apparently, there's going to be some issues of maybe loss. I don't know. And while he's searching for answers, he uncovers more. More people like him? Well, it also says that they are, like I said earlier, they're a rare breed. And it turns out these human-animal hybrids Mm -hmm. are immune to the infection of that pandemic that wiped out the world uh, about a decade ago. Wow. Who ordered this? For a pilot, and like I said, Robert Downey Jr. and his wife Susan Team Downey are producing it, and they have a director named Jim Mickle who did Hap and Leonard. That's that show with Michael K. Williams. Oh uh, my god! Yeah, we used to see like tons of commercials I for it. Freaking roll! But that's the reason why he couldn't come back for uh, Solo because he had to do that show. Okay. Well, this uh, director Jim Mickle will write and direct the pilot, so I will give it to you first. Now you saw the photos I of did. this. Can you describe a little bit about it? Now it'll be in the he show looks notes. Like a, he looks like a scrawny kid, like literally like a kid, like maybe teenage, like maybe fourteen, you were thinking fifteen. Cute. I know you were thinking. Cute. No, I was thinking more beefy and like muscular, you know, because he's like half human, half beast, pretty much, you know. And he's like a scrawny kid, and, he, and Patrick's right, like he said, he has antlers coming out of his. I think his ears are kind of like deer-like too. 
I'm looking guess, at it right now. It's, I guess my imagination. I, I mean, I wasn't thinking of him. Oh my god! Do you know what he looks like? Uh, do you remember in Sorry to Bother You when they when they turn into horse people? Oh yeah! If you haven't seen the Sorry to Bother You, that's hilarious. Oops. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's what his facial features remind me of in a in a sense. Like his nose is like animal style. Okay, <laughs> animal it's, style. It's a little. I'll be honest with you. The moment you're describing the In and Out menu, yeah. Yeah. it's a little bit of animal style here. With a side of four by four. <laughs> oh With a milkshake on top. I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we both, you know, like I said, the, the, uh, there's pictures of it in our show notes. So you can take a look at it. It's a really strange and weird concept and the artwork is very it's interesting. It's funky and I like it's it because strange yes. and weird is like right up my alley. Yeah. So it's so yeah, mine. Yeah, you here trying to say I'm bullying. I'm like, it looks weird. I, I think it looks fantastic. Uh, I'm interested in knowing more because this, this little description that we got, you know, I want to know about this pandemic that wiped the world out. I want to know about these rare hybrids. more and then like a whole yeah. army of them come. <laughs> And they're all going in now. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. And he's going to uncover more. So what more can he uncover? I don't know. You know, so interesting, like, interesting. so it's interesting, right? You're like, Ooh. and then Robert Downey Jr. producing this. We don't hear much about Robert Downey Jr.'s Team Downey productions no. doing a lot. So to me, this sounds like a comic that I need to read, and this sounds like a show I need to see. Now, who's doing a good job? Because we've talked about that we have. Marvel Runaways. Yeah, we love the Runaways. Season oh, two is coming. Oh my Bob, did you see the the trailer for season two? No, I have not two? seen the trailer oh. for it. And then back on episode 37, we talked about Old City Blues. Do you remember that comic? The one where Carrie yeah, Washington is yeah, going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and Gore, uh, um, Gore Ver, uh, um, Verbinski is going to be. We did that one with Death on Breath, right? Yeah. Okay. That's the one where the futuristic with the robots yeah. Yeah, and the humans. I'm up for this. This is what I want. I'm just curious with you, like you were saying, are there more of them? Obviously, they're rare. And how is it going to look? Is it going to be CGI? Or is it going to be makeup? What are we getting? You know what I mean? And if it's a pandemic and there's an infection, are there like are there like more deranged ones? Ooh, you know what I mean. So I don't know, but this is the right maybe, direction. Maybe there are more beefy ones. Oh, they, yeah, for you and in and out. <laughs> no, but uh, I think you can agree. We we do we use Hulu. You need to stop doing that. I'm gonna end up spitting out what I'm drinking. Well, it's gonna go straight to me anyway. <laughs> well, for for us, we we use Hulu. We watch a lot of shows that are on Hulu. Not as much original content. We should watch The Handmaid's Tale. We know. Well, we'll get on at some point, but Hulu isn't like a go-to place. You know, there's place. a lot of things to watch. Oh, yeah. But think about it. Hulu has The Runaways. Oh, I love The Runaways. That's like the only original content. That... Gert is my favorite. Yeah, but... I love Gert. If I'm right, you gonna before Netflix canceled all the series, you had the Marvel Netflix. Yeah. And then Amazon had... Don't talk about that. So it's Amazon has, it has some original shows. Well, we haven't gone that one either, but... They get a lot more attention. Hulu doesn't have as much attention. So this is a great pickup for Hulu. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious to see this. You think Robert Downey makes a cameo? Oh, that'd he's be a, awesome. He's the buff centaur looking Yes. Dude. Yes, please. <laughs> now with Jim Mickle, I didn't really touch on that. Don't know much about him, but I know that Happen Leonard got really good reviews. So this is probably a great choice. If he's going to write and direct the pilot... He already has knowledge with TV, mm-hmm. with Happen Letter. I think he'd be a good choice. All right. Well, that's it I got for the uh, TV news. A sweet tooth. You know, when it's you, a weird name. Don't when, you want to know yeah, what that means? Yeah. So yeah. when I first said that. I but he's like, eating chocolate in the. Um, yes. Yeah, he, oh, maybe he has a sweet, sweet tooth. tooth. Oh, oh, snap. Wow, well, we're morons. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's. Uh, Let's go over to the movie news now. Do you know anything about Five Nights at Freddy's? Oh my god. Okay, so all I know about this game okay, here we go. is when you and my brother used to come to work with me so we didn't have to drive around and we go to the movies after work and get lunch, you guys would sit in my office Oh yeah. <laughs> and you would watch videos of somebody playing it on YouTube. Yeah. And then I'd have to page back into my office from the front desk. And be like, keep it down. I hear you guys screaming. You guys are like, oh, ah, what is that? <gasps> it, was, it was mostly you, Patrick. I almost punched your computer screen at work. Yes, you told me. me that. That's not okay. I was, that's a new screen. So, since you don't know what Five Nights at Freddy's no, is. No, I don't know what it is. It's getting a movie. So, let me tell you what and it I is. And I know it's very popular. So, but it's finally getting a film adaptation. Do the we works. need... F- I'm getting tired of this. Let's see what you think of the concept. Okay. okay so, this is a mobile game. Now, in this mobile game... Mm-hmm. You are a brand new, fresh security officer. Oh, okay. So it speaks to you. Yeah, I once was a security officer who worked late night shifts. 
Except I didn't work at a pizza parlor. Now, this is at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Parlor. I think it's a pizza parlor. It's like a Chuck E. Cheese. You know, with the animatronics. Oh, I don't like that. Okay. God, those things scare okay. me. Well, okay, then you're... Because they're going to come to lie one day and they're going to eat you. You might, be, like uh, you might be in those words of, like, I don't know if they need to make a movie about this. So, you're a new officer who has to sit in front of all these cameras. Mm-hmm. You have two doors next to you that you can control. Are you by yourself? You're by yourself. Oh, the cuckoo's going to come out and get you. Now... Is it at night? Yes. Oh, shit. It's like early morning, like... To like, okay, I think midnight to six. That's when the scary stuff okay. comes out. Okay. Well, I used to work it, so I, yeah, I saw some scary stuff. Okay, so you're at the you're at this pizza parlor. I'm at getting night. chills right now. Okay, oh my all right, God. ready? Okay, I'm like so hyping myself. You up. have two doors. You have two doors to get okay. in this building. So you're sitting there. You can operate. You can shut them from your your desk. Mm-hmm. You can watch the cameras. Mm-hmm. You can turn on lights by the doors to see if there's anybody there. Okay. Now. Your boss leaves you a voicemail each night telling you instructions. Now, apparently at night, the animatronics come to life and want to kill you. Oh, hell no. So you can see them in their in their room. Uh-huh. Now, as you're flipping through your cameras and you're shutting the doors, you have 100% batteries. You have to conserve it. But as you're looking at the camera slowly... Your battery starts to die. Well, it starts to die until you get to the next day. But you have to conserve it. As you're looking at those, the animatronics start moving toward coming to get you. Oh, no. So now you see why I was screaming because it would pop up. And when they get too close to the door, you yeah. can shut the door and they'll eventually leave and try to come around. So think of it like this. You could just shut the doors and not look at the cameras, but you are it's going to die. You have to play it smart. So you have to be it's real. To strategize. Yes. And it could require them coming very close to you. So you'll oh, see them no. pop up. Fuck that, and you have dude. to do this for like five nights. I think. Well, five nights of Friday. <laughs> get it. <laughs> there you get go. it. Oh, good one. All right. So I don't know. That sounds scary. This is man. from creator Scott Calhoun, who's actually working on the film. So he's actually involved in this film. He's writing it. Now, this is coming from Blumhouse. And the director they got back in February is Christopher Columbus. He directed the first two Harry Potters. That now, put a smile on my face. Before we get into the big news, what do you think now that that whole concept? Well, now that you said Harry Potter, I'm totally on board. No, no, whoa, I'm talking about, like, the whole shutting the door. Wow. It is it is scary. I'll be honest. I have, play, I have it on my phone. I've played it, and I cannot get past, I think it's the third day. Because very, they start... Very you, intriguing. You want me to tell you what happens when no, you lose power? No, don't right, ruin it. I have to, well, I have to. Okay. All right, now I don't want to watch it. So, what, what? it doesn't mean it's going to be the same way. But when you... Let's say you run out of power before you're... Because once you reach a certain time, you can go home, and you're saved. If you lose power, it all goes dark, and you start hearing, like, a weird noise... And then they usually jump at you from, like, your desk and kill you. Interesting. Isn't that cool? So, what do you think of that concept? You didn't think the mobile game was like that, did you? No. What did you think it was? Just curious. I don't know. All I know is I hear you guys screaming and giggling. And I'm like, I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a lot of giggling. No, but um, I actually think the game's interesting. It's a cool concept. I know I got into it really late. I know it was really it was really a bigger game, I think, by the time I had gotten into it. But um, I enjoy it. So... The reason why we're talking about this Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, this is coming from Blumhouse, as I said, and they already have Ooh, a director. Blumhouse. Yeah, they, yeah, perfect place, right? I think that's a perfect home for this. Yeah. Because they, they obviously know how to work on these type of things. This requires some CGI, though. Because if you, you've seen some of the merchandise at Target. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a big deal. All right, well, Scott Calhoun, or Calhoun, or Calhoun, he's writing it, the creator of this Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, recently, he shared the news that the script was being scrapped for the film. He did this on like a game, I think the game form for, for the Friday Nights of Freddy's. Mm-hmm. He said his reason was Jason Blum liked it, Christopher Columbus, the director, liked it. He liked it, but he decided to scrap it because he has a better idea. And he has to stick to his belief of making the movie right or not making it at all. So I appreciate that. I really do. And he says that even if it takes 10 more times at an attempt to make the script right, he will do it because he knows that the film will benefit each time in a positive way. Oh, that's interesting. And he does say there are sequels involved, and this will follow the first three games, since they're the best part of the storyline in his mind. I mean, he created it. He would know. So, right off the bat, Chris, what do you think? That sounds really interesting, actually. Okay. Um, I think I'm willing to check out the game. It's Because it's, it's Blumhouse, right? Blumhouse, yes. Blumhouse says it all, right? Yeah. Blumhouse yeah. sells me. Yeah, I think I think it's, uh, I like it. But even if they were to go, like, the indie route, this sounds interesting. One thing I love is, is is when creators are involved. Yes. I don't like it when creators are not involved. I just don't want them to be too controlling where they dictate things because I might get some flack for this, but I sometimes think that like George Lucas had gotten a little too crazy mm-hmm. and J.K. Rowling has gotten a little too crazy with their properties where they, 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 they hug them too tight. Yes. And here's another one. This one's going to be totally like, what? 
is I had read that the Fifty Shades, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, um, author, mm-hmm. the creator had too much of a grip on it, and I think that ultimately ruined the franchise. Besides the fact that the film was or the books were not even that great anyway. I haven't read them, so I don't know. It's just the story wasn't that intriguing to me. Uh, I think this is gonna be a terrifying film because think of it like this: if they did it closely resembling the game, mm-hmm. that is terrifying. That is terrifying. That is terrifying. Now, the only difference would be, I don't think that he's going to be able to sit through the whole movie. Yeah. He'd have to start moving around and trying to survive. I mean, obviously, you're going to have to switch it up a little bit. It would be cool to see him running through there, trying to survive. You know what I mean? I think that'd be interesting. Do you think you survive? I would not survive once. I, I, I wouldn't. I I'm the sur- biggest I can't even I... survive the walkthrough of watching someone play it. I can't <laughs> even survive playing it. I can only get to the third day. Yeah, I no, I'm done. I'm immediately done. I, I go straight over and try to eat whatever pizza's left in the trash. Oh as my I'm god, dying. ew. I'm dead. I'm done. One thing I do have concerns with is taking too long. Because this, this property's hot. I mean, I saw it at Target. Fire. You saw, yeah, you were like, wait, isn't that the game you were like jumping from? Like, when that is at Target as piggy banks, blankets and stuff, it's a big property. I think you got to capitalize. You have to have it out by 2020 at best. Because yeah, you go don't, past that, don't wait too long. Even at 2020, it's a little stretch. But I trust that Scott Calhoun has an interesting idea. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Blumhouse has done a great job of allowing creators to have a hold on their project. Todd McFarlane with Spawn. Uh, Spawn. Spawn. Yeah. Having Spawn, letting him direct his first film with his baby. Sure, I'm up for that. Blumhouse, I trust. I don't think they've put out a bad project in, in a quite a while. And have done a great job with budget, too. I just think that with an interesting game, this could be an, a cool original concept. If, like I said earlier, if they follow the game pretty similar. Now, I'm saying you're going to have to stretch it out, obviously. Like, you can't sit on the desk, but... Have them running around, but if you if you switch it up a little bit, this could be like one of the best fresh original ideas in horror in a long time. Like Get Out, Quiet Place, like it could yeah. be in that lane. You know what I mean? So I'm up for this. Uh, Christopher Columbus did the first two Harry Potter's. Those are actually some of the Harry Potter's I actually adore. So I'm up for that. But um, what about you? You think you're gonna survive? No, I die. You should play and see see how you do. You should play. I think it'd be interesting to watch you play it. Cause why? You, well, I just want to see My how... My reaction? Yeah, I think it'd be hilarious to watch you react to it. Hmm. We'll see. Maybe we'll throw it up. Yeah? Maybe we'll record it or something. But it's scary, I'll be honest. When you play the game, and you'll see one of them staring at you. No, like, I'm, the done. Screen. I'm done. I'm done now you telling me that. And then, like, you'll see ones, like, by the door. Like, like you'll flash on the light, and like, it's just it's just there. And then you guys shut Does the door. Does it come and eat you? Yeah, they're trying to kill you. Oh. There's a story to it. I don't okay. want to tell you. I know a little bit about the story. It's pretty good. But uh, I'm up for this, so yes to Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. Yes to getting it done immediately. Yes. No to taking longer than 2020. That's even True. stretching it for me. Preach. Thank you. So, anything else? Not it. All right. Now it's time to take a stroll down Superheroes Alley. What is Superheroes Alley? Superheroes Alley is our segment where we talk any and everything superhero comics related. All right, well, we got some DC news here. The Flash <laughs> movie that we've been talking uh-huh. about on several episodes. Well, you know, I, I went back to how long we were talking about it. We've talked about it since episode 13. Oh, God. 55. So back on episode 13, we knew that the Game Night directors... Whoops, hey, man. Hey, 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 hit, now. Hit, hit in the thing here. Yeah. So we know that the Game Night directors back in February, I think it was February or March when we talked about in episode 13, mm-hmm. that they got picked up to direct this film. Because this film has lost a lot of directors. We could I feel go... like this film was never going to come out. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling too. Now, they signed up to direct it. Now, I guess apparently Ezra Miller says that the Flash film will get made. That's why we're talking about this. Wow. Oh. I guess I was reading that this film was supposed to go into production early next year, so around probably January, February, and mm-hmm. it's going to come out 2020. Because it's already missed its original release yeah. date of this year, like on my birthday, March tw- March 2018. But damn Fantastic Beasts and their success from the first one pushed the film back because Warner Brothers said this over The Flash um, because Ezra Miller is in Fantastic Beasts. And then I guess I saw back in October that it's still reported to go into production next year, but it wouldn't come out till 2021. Oh my god, what's the point at that point? Because apparently the script needs work and production wasn't ready, which would fall in line with what I just said earlier. They chose Fantastic Beasts over The Flash because that 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 franchise at least has an idea of where it's going. Now, Ezra Miller did a Playboy article and some photos. 
Oh my goodness. He's a fantastic actor. He is. Phenomenal actor. Not only is he a fantastic beast, he's a fantastic actor. No, but um, he did an interview, or I think he did an interview in the article of uh, Playboy, and he said that we have to trust in the process. Along the lines that this is what he said. You gotta trust the process, because even though Barry Allen might be late, when he arrives, things will be solved. And it's one of his dream projects, so he is very serious it'll get made. I hope so. Alright, you're up first. What do you think? I think they're taking too long and it makes me nervous and it, it kind of reminds me of <sighs> Say it. Solo. Gambit? Oh, I think you Gambit. Said Gambit. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Gambit already. But you know what I mean? Like, the, the longer you take to get things going and it, it, it makes your audience lose confidence in your project. Okay. And it makes it seem like you're not confident in your project. How, and then, this... and then, and then people get disinterested. I mean, he's been around since like 2016. Batman vs Superman. He yeah. showed up. Then they did Justice League last year around this time. What's taking so long? But uh, I will say this: two things came to my mind with this. This is going down. This is this is DC's gambit. Yeah, they can't figure it out. They have a lead. They keep going through directors. What is taking so long? He's one of the highlights. A lot of people who like Justice League or like some part of Justice League said the following. Aquaman, Flash, perfect. Those were the scene stealers. What's taking so long? I don't know. I mean, I get it. With Batman, they don't know what they're doing with Ben Affleck. With Henry Cavill, they don't know if he's able to carry the DC mantle. Wonder Woman is holding the mantle. She is. Aquaman, there's room for Aquaman. We're going to see how he does. And, you know, we'll see how that film goes. We got... Other films in the works. What is taking so long with The Flash? Like, Green Lantern? There's no Green Lantern actor. I get it. What's taking so long? Because this is going down that Gambit route, which is driving me nuts because those two should not have any problems getting no. made. Now, another thing that came to my mind when I heard about this was 2021. This is ridiculous. It'll be five years before we even see him in a... Well, four years because he was in Justice League. But five years since it was since he was first seen in that milk scene. Too long. Yes. And also, I also said is, how is this taking so long when we're getting a Shazam film? A property that not many people know. Like, Shazam wasn't something you... You, you asked me, what is Shazam? Yeah. When I was saying it's coming. You know Flash. Whether you know a lot about him, you know... He's on, yeah. got the CW show. He runs fast. That's crazy. But again, that goes back to, I don't think they're that confident in this project. Hence is why they're moving forward with other stuff. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I don't know how... Fantastic Beast is going to be doing after the second one. We're going to review that one. Actually, it's one of our next reviews up. That film, I don't know if with all the controversy around it, and it was uh, it didn't do as well as they hoped. I don't know how much of a, a sure thing Fantastic Beast is going to be anymore. Yeah, they might choose the Flash over. They might say, hey, you know, maybe we should wait a year with Fantastic Beast. You know, the Harry Potter route was working, but maybe not anymore. And then I was thinking in my mind. Also, he's barely in Fantastic Beast. So what is taking so long? But now I understand why he's. This film, The Flash, is getting pushed back because of Fantastic Beasts. Because if I say it, it's kind of a spoiler, but we get why they've been they've been holding back the film because he's going to have a little bit of a bigger, bigger role, role in the Fantastic Beast franchise. Even at that, don't spoil anything. No. And then here's another thing. I love you, Ezra Miller, but you said we need to trust. We've trusted DC, and we got Nothing. Batman versus Superman. We got Justice League. Nothing. We got Man of Steel. We Nothing. got Wonder Woman. Hey, 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 wait. I like Man of Steel. And we got Suicide Squad. So right off the bat, Chris, I'm going to name them off one more time. You tell me, yeah or nay. Batman versus Superman. Nay. Justice League. Maybe. What's well, it's yay or nay? Oh, I kind of You like, like Justice it. League. I'm going to say, say yeah, yay. We'll Man of Steel. Yay. Wonder Woman. Yay. Suicide Squad. Yay. All right, so Yay. you're you're four for five, but in terms of criticalness, it's what? That's actually I think one. One's only certified fresh. Yeah. Yeah. One, one, one got the best reviews. So I'm with you. I'm four for five on the films, but they've never been as good as Marvel films. Oh, I, I, of I, course I, not. And I, I usually was thinking you're going to bring this up, and I know I always give you a hard time about this, but I'm just saying that the quality of DC hasn't been inspiring confidence. We're hoping Aquaman changes things after Wonder Woman got the ball rolling. It got some early or good reviews, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, and Shazam is, is anticipated to be a, hopefully a great film. So, will this Flash film ever get made? No. Oh, stop it. How can it take so long when the guy who's looking to get a movie is named The Flash? Like, how long does it take to make a Flash movie? I don't know, Patrick. Preach. We actually may have gotten the Flash movie. It's called Forrest Gump when he's running. <laughs> 
I mean, I don't get this. Uh, just, I don't know. I I, I want to believe Ezra Miller. Because I, I think he deserves at least get a film, right? I mean, he at least gets a he film. He deserves it, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. I think I think we should take a poll. What will happen first? Ezra Miller gets his movie, or Zack Snyder directs um, Cyborg? Oh, Cyborg. Oh, here's even a better one. <laughs> Which one of the following will get made? A Cyborg film? A Flash film? Or will or will Disney Plus pick up the Netflix Marvel shows? Which one's oh, that's a good one. Which one's gonna get done? So yeah, I hope this gets made though. I think he deserves at least uh, be able to, to to put on the mantle. I'd like to see it on the screen. I think that's one of my dreams is seeing the Flash on the big screen. Yeah, why not? And he's a cool character. I mean, forgetting Aquaman. Come on, <laughs> great. I mean, Leo. All right, so we're gonna head out of the alley and we're going into trailer reaction now. This one, I know it's a big deal for you. So go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. Tell them what it is. The Lion King. Now I saw the trailer without you. I it I was this, working this mofo. Thank this you. mofo. Thank you. Hi. So on Thanksgiving, I'm working on that Black Friday. He's ep- working the last on episode. our. He's working on our episode. We just got done recording, and I go in the kitchen to help my mom finish cooking, and then I come back in here tell him something, and this mofo is freaking watching the trailer. And I'm like, you selfish. I turn around, I'm like, hey, you want to watch this? He's a shit. No, he was already midway through the trailer. I thought it was fake, so I'm like, I'm going to watch it first. And then I come into the living room, and my dad's sitting on his chair (laughs) with his iPad, and he's watching it too. And I'm like, are you kidding me? My dad goes, hey, the Lion King trailer dropped. (laughs) He was on on Twitter. And I'm like. He doesn't watch much I know, I know. And I go, you know what? I have both of you. I go, Mom, I'm put- I'm I- going in and out. I went, I went to the other <laughs> living room. I go, Mom, I'm putting on the Lion King. She's I'm like, going to call Pat Man to the rescue. She was like, Chris, we don't got time for the Lion King. We got to finish cooking. <laughs> but All I right. ended up watching it. It. So John Favreau's doing this after yes. the Jungle Book. Now, I was a little hesitant about that. Not because I don't trust in Favreau. How, how similar it would be, right? The Jungle Book. Yes. I thought the Jungle Book was, was fantastic. So, oh my I love God. John Favreau. The first Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, he's done like even his acting swingers. Yeah, couples he's doing retreat. The, he's doing the Mandalorian. Yes. Yeah, cu- couples retreat. He's doing the Mandalorian series. He's running that. So let's go ahead and get into it. The Lion King live action trailer. Go. What'd you think? So dun dun dun. I'm trying to think how I'd want to word this. It was crap. No, no, no it wasn't crap. It was really good. My only concern, and now it has me thinking about Aladdin too. I. I don't know if I want a complete rehash. They have to change some things to have the film stand on its own. But visually, the opening scenes was just like the movie. Okay. Like, I got... It's so lifelike. I got chills, Yeah, it's... Man. A, it's, it's it looks phenomenal. Breathtaking. Oh, my God. I'm over here singing to myself. I'm like, it's the cycle. No, not mine. It's like, uh, you know, Weta that makes the Planet of the Apes? Yeah. Totally? It's like they... It's like they injected themselves with, like, all types of serum to, to get, like, even more ridiculous. Because this looks ridiculously... Lifelike. Lifelike. Oh, and my it's, it's kind goodness. And of, it's kind of alarming, but yet you're like, yeah! And yeah. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I remember when this was animated. Yeah. Um, Craziness. I will say that there are some concerns that it looks... It could be similar in terms of effects of Jungle Book, but better. Yeah. Um, but you're right. It, it showed a lot. I think... I think they are trying, and I know I bring this up all the time as an example, but I think a lot of lot of properties are trying to do the the sequel, the legacy sequel type of approach, like Star Wars: The Force Wins. We have to go back. We have to show you something that you've seen, so you'll come up. Even though they could honestly do something a little bit, obviously, I hope they tweak it a little differently with the Lion King, and people would still flock out and see it, whether they like it or not. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, it was very, yeah. I think we watched the trailer where it showed the original. Yeah, side by side. And then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, basically, it just looks like a rehash. So, my concern is... Rehash. Rehash. But just analyzing... We're just going to talk about the trailer. The trailer looks fantastic. Fantastic. I want to see this. I didn't know how excited I was until I watched it because they all said, this is going to be something you've never seen before. I remember at, at D23 last yeah. year. Was it last year? Yeah. Yeah, they said that this blew the... This, like... Or whoever, whoever saw this trailer, it blew the house but down. But you think of it this way. Who doesn't like the Lion King? I don't. No, I don't know. I like literally was about to throw this mic at you. But there might be people who have never seen the Lion King. Oh my god, no. It's possible. No. There's somebody out there that's never seen it. Wh- where does this person live? Under a rock? Maybe. What if they're a young child who hasn't been exposed to it? They, you know, they're they're growing up with the Despicable Me's. You know, they got the new Grinch. Hey. 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 
that's not my Grinch. <laughs> we haven't got there yet. I know, we haven't got there. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I think the shirt looks fantastic. I think it looks that, great. I mean, Simba looked real. Yeah. I mean, it was like, if I picked that now, up from the trailer, I think that the thing would have bit me. I think the only thing that Patrick was a little kind of like, oh, they shouldn't have done that. But it happens in the movie. Oh, okay. Is yeah. when they, when. Circle of Life. Is that when, what they When they lift Simba up over Pride Rock. Okay, is it, I thought that, I don't know what it's called, that's why I said it out loud. Is it, yeah, I don't like that. No, I don't like that. I do, because that's iconic. And then, and then it goes, done, and then the, and then the rest of the movie starts. And then we, yeah, I think we see, yeah, I mean, yeah. But I'm talking about the trailer. See, the reason why you're like, why didn't you like it? Is because I think it's more exciting when you haven't seen the live action version, and you're, and you're kind of like, you know when you see, like, anytime they bring back a film where it hits your heart a lot, like, you know, like, even like Toy Story, if they do little things from the first one. And you're like, oh, okay, I get it. It plays off your nostalgia. How exciting would it be in the theaters? You haven't seen what they can do with the live action version. And then they do it and you're like, oh, this is you. Oh, my God. I think That's beautiful. I think one of the things that I'm really interested to see how they how they recreate, um, I just can't wait to be king. Oh, okay, okay. When they well, have yeah, all we- the animals dancing around and stuff. Or or when Timon's in his little, like, luau outfit mm-hmm. being a distraction. Like, I want to just kind of see. But... I don't know. We'll see. But I think the trailer uh, definitely captured my attention. It's one of the best trailers I've seen in a while. I'm like, I'm working, and I don't believe it's real. And then when I watch, I'm like, oh, shit. This is real. And I have to finish it because I'm like, it's really good. No, you couldn't have paused it. Let me go grab Carissa. Let's watch it together from the beginning. No, because you're selfish. Okay. Shrug? That's all you got was a shrug? Uh, definitely. Uh, we only have one trailer this time, but I have to say that The Lion King was... Uh, Fire. I actually think that this is making Aladdin look terrible. I think this makes Dumbo look terrible. How dare you? Wait, all three of them come out next year? That's what I was about to say. Toy Story 4. Oh, that too. Aladdin, The Lion King, and um, Dumbo. And then also you got Avengers 4. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, and then Spider-Man Homecoming, or Far yes. From Home. Yes. And X-Men Dark Phoenix. Hey. Hey. <laughs> No, but we still be trying to But if we're just talking about the animated, uh, yeah. the, the live action remakes, yeah, Dumbo, Aladdin, Lion and the Lion King. King. Man, what is gonna happen in twenty twenty? Fire, man! What's oh tw- my goodness! What's twenty twenty then? I don't know, but Little Mermaid. So hard. It's gotta be Little Mermaid. I don't know, man. Don't go there yet. Mulan. Uh, Mulan too. Oh wow. Ugh. I don't know. Aren't you a little concerned because we didn't like Beauty and the Beast that much? That the, all these other films might. But have- I like Cinderella. See, I think it depends on the director. I'm not talking, the, I'm not like saying the director for, you know, Beauty and the Beast wasn't I didn't like good. the choices. I didn't like the direction. Yes. Okay, maybe it's the Or the designs. I don't know. Because he had a, his creative control. I didn't like his creative decisions. You know what we really, really, I didn't care for? And, and I think if I say this, people are going to come at me with pitchforks. I really wish Emma Watson could sing. I hey, hated. leave Hermione alone, bro. I, I love Hermione, but I hated that they altered her voice. I have a very good ear. And I could hear it, and every time I would hear that they altered her voice, I would cringe inside. I just want to make a video where not only do I piss you off, but it may satisfy you a little bit. Is I want to just dub her with like T Pain lyrics when she's yeah, singing. Yeah, you, you might as well have done that. <laughs> uh, but overall, I think the Lion King trailer is fantastic, yeah. right? I think we can agree to that. So that's it for trailers. We're going to move over to the Funko side. Chris has got some Funko! Funkos for us, and I have a revelation that's going to shock you when you talk about your Funkos. Why? Y- you'll be shocked. Just wait. Alright, first up, Patrick, have you ever seen a movie called Dirty Dancing? Hmm, ah, uh, yes, I think I have. <laughs> it's, it's that one with Patrick Swayze, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the movie, it's fantastic. It's, come on, it's, come on. Alright, so they are making Dirty Somebody Dancing. Somebody puts baby in the corner. Exactly. Dirty Dancing Funkos. Really? About yes. time, about time. They're making Baby. I'm going to look this up because I, I should look And they're up. making Johnny. Wait, what's, what's the names again? Baby. Oh, baby. Okay. And Johnny. Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. Uh, you know, um, you know, I think I this is gonna sound weird. I'm not really like a big Dirty Dancing fan. I like the movie, I, but I have to say that I might have to get it for 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 baby or uh, Patrick Swayze. Well, you can get them individually, or you can get them as a two pack, which will be an exclusive at Target. Get in the two pack. I think that's that's the only time. Like, get a two pack. Get a two pack. Yeah. <laughs> So this is really cute. They are both in um their dance stances. Baby has her. She had she had really big eighties curly hair. They need to bring that back. 
And she's wearing some <laughs> shorts, tank top, high waisted shorts, and sneakers. And she's ready to like to move and start to start dancing. And then Johnny is in his famous black attire, black tank top, black pants, black shoes, with that Patrick Swayze hair that he had. And he's in also in a dance, like he's ready to get to dance together. You know, when I was a child, yeah. I was like, man, no, no one famous is named Patrick. And I started Googling, like, who's a famous person? Like, actor, like Patrick. Because I'm like, oh, I always I always thought my name was whatever. And then I found out Patrick Stewart. And then I found out that Patrick Swayze, when I was younger, I'm like, those guys are cool. Like, Swayze was always the definition of cool to me. And, like, anything he would do, I'm like, that guy's cool. Right? No. What are yeah, you laughing? No, no. It's Patrick <laughs> I'm changing think, my name. I, I just think you're funny because it's kind of like, I look at my name, Patrick. Yeah, I was like, who's famous Patrick? I mean, like. But Patrick's such a basic name. I mean, a lot of Patricks. But, like, famous people like Patrick wasn't, like, a first name famous. You didn't see many famous Patricks. Like, you see a lot of last names. Sean, or Sean, or the guy from Save the Last Dance, Sean Patrick Thomas, or Sean, uh, Sean, or Sean Patrick Flannery. Is his name Patrick Flannery? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is. Sean Patrick Flannery. So, like, that's what I'm trying to say. There's not many Patricks that are famous. There's my name is Carissa. Did so... you ever look that up and see if there's anybody? No, I can't even get my name on a freaking, like, little souvenir license plate. Like, stop complaining about your name. <laughs> Leave me alone. Jerk. What do we got next? Next up, have you ever watched Nacho Libre? Are you ready for the revelation? Yeah. Never seen it. Shut the front door. Are you fucking serious? Never seen Nacho Libre. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, what? Yes. Yes. There's two things in life that may not be real, but they are to me. Batman is real. Nacho Libre, I've never seen. Wow. Never I, seen it. Uh, what is it about? I know it's about wrestlers, but is it a story where he's trying to be a wrestler? Is that what it, I've seen the beginning of it, I, I think, maybe. But so I've then you seen, have watched it. Why are you lying but to I've me? Never, no, i only seen the beginning. And it was like substitute, but I never finished it. So I only saw like the first like five minutes of it, so I didn't know what it was. So explain it to me. I know Jack Black's in it. Yeah, Jack Black is in it, and you like Jack Black. I do. I do like Jack Black. I think he's a fantastic actor. So what do we got here next? So we have Nacho Libre Pops. I thought you were going to tell me what the movie's about. No, I think you should watch it for yourself and figure it out. Oh, wait, let me go back to Dirty Dancing. You distracted me. Okay. So these Pops will be coming in December. Oh, okay, so next month. Yes. Okay, okay. Now, the Nacho Libre Pops will be coming in January, and we have two. Okay. One is Jack Black in his wrestling costume. He's in his stance with <laughs> hands on his hips. Look at this. His mustache, his hair. And this one will come with the chase. The chase will have his wrestling kind of... Oh, I gotta get... I don't... I, don't, I, I can't even finish. You're, like, gasping on I there. want that chase. That looks so cool with him with the mask on. Yeah, with the mask on. Thanks, Patrick, because you gasped. He's got that, that Rey Mysterio mask. Yes. Oh. Well, it's luchadors. Yeah, it's about it's about luchador wrestling. Maybe. Did you like the movie? I actually did. That was funny. Is it? Is it? I don't remember. Is it in English? Yes. Oh, okay. I I I thought it. Was, someone told me it was like completely in Spanish. No. Uh, you had to watch subtitles, which I don't care. That doesn't bother me. I don't think so. Oh, okay. So this comes out January. Which one did you like? I love that. Oh, chase. the chase is really. Cool. But the cape's cool. I didn't know you yeah. had a cape on all that. So of the two pops. They're going to be coming out. Dirty Dancing, Nacho Libre. What do you pick? Oh, Dirty Dancing, bro. Nacho Libre. <laughs> I, I love the mask. I think the mask is cool. Yeah. All right. And that is all I have for Funko News. All right. So we've done everything we need to do. It's time to get in our ship. It's time to hit the navigational system. It is time to take me to the ball game. To the outer rim. <laughs> what is uh, take me to the outer rim, Chris? That's where we get some peanuts and some Cracker Jacks. <laughs> Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's what it is. I hate that. I'm mad at you. <laughs> if anybody could just see the way he's glaring at me right now, take me to the outer rim. Is at you our more. Star Wars look at you segment? It is Patrick's favorite segment of our podcast. It's about Star Wars, everything. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. You know, it's really funny. The other day. And like Patrick loves three things, and they're three P's: popcorn, pizza, and pops. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I got some Mandalorian rumors. Or oh, rumor, I'm sorry, rumor. Are you ready? Go. Now we know that Pedro Pascal 
was in final negotiations. He's most likely the lead, as we had talked about in a rumor, and then I think we talked about in another episode that it's it's happening. Mm-hmm. He's the lead of The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Well, they have to get other people in the cast. Rumor is Carl Weathers will be joining the cast of The Mandalorian. Now, Carl Weathers, if you know by name, if not, you might recognize his iconic character in film history. He plays Apollo Creed there you go. in the Rocky franchise. He's, have- he's the father, father of Adonis Creed from the Creed franchise right now. This apparently has came from the Making of Star Wars podcast. Hey, a podcast is maybe breaking some news. They're not sure what his role is, but it won't be a main character on the show, which I wouldn't think it would be. Because, I mean, you know, I, I think he's more of like the older, wise man. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help this. I'm going to help Pedro Pascal out. And there's also some other tidbits. So, actually, there are some other rumors. So, I was right. Also mentions Taika Waititi. I don't know if we talked about this. Might be voicing a droid. We did not. What? I hope it's a. I hope it's a cork as a droid. Oh, I love cork. And then and the same, Meek. except not being a droid, but other director. So because Taika Waititi's directing an episode or two, I think it's two episodes. Ooh. Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, Ron Howard's that's daughter right, that's from right. Jurassic World, she's directing. I think an episode or two. She will also be appearing on the show. But none of this is confirmed. This is all rumors. So let's go ahead. Of course, of course. Let's go ahead and start with Carl Weathers, a.k.a. Apollo Creed, possibly joining the Mandalorian. That's interesting, actually. That's a fantastic yeah, surprise. Yeah, yeah. Like, nobody... He, yeah, right? It's it's a very interesting choice. Why is he not doing cons? I would love to be yeah, Apollo Creed, right? Right? <laughs> right? You're better than your son! <laughs> uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> So, yeah, Carl Weathers, I think that's a fantastic choice. Uh, I think he'd be great. I'd love to see him in the Mandalorian armor or something. Something like that. I think he'd be, like, Apollo Creed as mm-hmm. a bounty hunter. I mean, that's... Interesting. Bounty hunter, Apollo Creed, mix B and A, badass. Oh, my God. I actually think this would be a... Uh, hopefully, this is not just a rumor. This is true. I think he'd be a great... Uh, this would be a great role for him. He's a great actor. We haven't seen him in a lot of mainstream stuff, which is a shame because I've seen him in some stuff, and I'm like, he... He's still got it. He's got he to be more it. stuff. It's just funny, though, because I think about it when I read this. I'm like, he traded boxing for to be a bounty hunter. Like, what a smart choice, right? Boxing for bounty hunter. Yeah. There you go. Okay, let's talk about Taika Waititi possibly voicing a droid in the I Mandalorian love series. it because I love Korg. Yeah. If it was just Korg voice, it wouldn't even bother I, I'd be happy. If they made it sound a little more robotic. I think this is a great choice. So th- th- that means we're going to get some humor. Yes. And I have to say that Taika Waititi is one of those people you're like, Star Wars is famous for having iconic droids. Mm-hmm. You know, C-3PO, R2-D2, BB-8, K-2SO, and then L-337. Yes. Yeah. There L3. you go. I'm like, hey, hey now. So now we got Taika Waititi, hopefully. Now let's move over to Bryce Dallas Howard. I'm excited for her. I'm, you know, I, I think this is a really big opportunity for her. Yes. And I am really excited to see what she's going to do with it. Yeah, because she's one of the first... Uh, Females to be directing Star Wars in, yes. in a Star Wars property. This mm-hmm. is fantastic. I'm not really big Jurassic World fan, so you know, I you know, I'm not really big into that. So anybody that's in it, whatever. But I'm excited for her because I think she'd be. I think she's a great actress, and I think this would be a good property for her because a lot of her, you know, because they made that joke that she kills all franchises. Yeah, she's a <laughs> but, yeah, sequel killer. Yeah, she's a threequel killer or whatever. Uh, I think this is great for her because I mean, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Out of all these rumors, if you had to choose which one is true, I'm going to give you the option of okay. Carl Weathers, a.k.a. Apollo Creed, is cast in The Mandalorian, mm-hmm. Taika Waititi is a droid, or he's voicing a droid, and Bryce Dallas Howard will appear on the show. I think I'm going to go with Taika Waititi. Wow, I knew it. I knew it. I love Korg. I know, I know but... Korg is so cute. I have to go and with... his friend Meek. So I'll have to choose Carl Weathers going to The Mandalorian. Fantastic. I think it's fantastic. I hope that's true. And then my second one would be Taika Waititi as droid. But that's all I have for the Mandalorian. Now, moving over, I have to bring up some Last Jedi stuff here. But Ryan Johnson has constantly been berated still on Twitter. If you can believe it, on social media, he still gets berated about The Last Jedi. Well, he chimed in on a convo of somebody defending Last Jedi and somebody arguing against Last Jedi. And he said something... That is so hilarious, but I believe it is true as well that I had to bring it up here. Are you ready? Go. Yeah. He said that his Luke Skywalker is 100% in line with the character from the original trilogy. He said, not now this isn't verbatim, but this is ex- kind of what he said. So his character, his version of Luke is 100% in line with the original trilogy's Luke. 
And then he said, in terms of words and actions versus the marketing. So he's saying that his character is in line, but the marketing didn't showcase it. Okay. The way it was portrayed in the marketing, which I I could agree to that because they portrayed it a little differently. And then he finishes it off with, now this one's pretty hilarious. I'll be at the bar if you need me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let you take this one. What do you think? I don't know. I feel like he's ready for like more backlash for that comment. Bring it on. I'm, I'm yeah. going to be side by side with him. Dude. Are you? <laughs> that's Kyle Ren. <laughs> Last Jedi. Oh, no, but seriously, that's what he's saying, that his Luke is 100% in line with the Luke from the original trilogy in terms of his words and action. He seems more bitter and... All right, let's think of it like this. I read this article and I, there were some points. It was from Screen Rant. I'm going to give him mm-hmm. some credit. I was reading this because I was like, I don't know. I do agree. I was thinking about Star Wars the other day. When are you not thinking about Star Wars? I'm thinking about it all the time. Exactly. I think it is... I don't know if it's 100%, but I would say it's 80, 80 85%. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Okay. If we're talking about overall of the movie... It's 80-85%. If we're talking about the end of Last Jedi, it's 100%. And I'll say this. 80-85% because obviously Luke isn't the same. If you haven't seen Last Jedi, we're going to give you a few seconds. You're a fool. You have to, right? Everyone's arguing about it. In The Last Jedi, you know it too. Luke isn't the same. No. He's bitter. Yeah. He's he's kind of a hermit crab. He's on his own. He's a hermit. And he doesn't want to be a Jedi anymore. He's he doesn't a, believe in the Jedi. Course. And yeah, and he tried to kill his nephew. Yeah. Okay. So those He's right derailed. there, those right there, that's not the Luke that we remember. No. But I do agree with this though. His actions, if you remember Luke, was, everyone's like, Luke was not like this. But if you look at it, back in the day, Luke was training with Yoda, made a, made a brash decision to leave his training to go save his friends, even though he wasn't equipped to take on Darth Vader. Okay. Okay, so Luke makes a brash decision to try to kill his his nephew because he realizes that that man is horrible, right? I mean, he's horrible. He's worse than Luke's dad, right? Would you say Kylo Ren is worse? He's willing to kill his damn parents. Kylo Ren is lost. Oh, yeah. And he needs guidance. And I don't think it was right for Luke to react so quickly when he could have prevented some of this. If exactly. he would have took a moment to step back and realize this young man needs guidance. Yeah, because like... All right, here's a good example. The Emperor and Darth Vader assumed, well, the Emperor really assumed that, that Luke would turn mm-hmm. and take his place, take his father's place. Yeah. So Luke made that same decision by by saying, Kyle Ren, there's, there's no saving him. I got to kill him. Moving over from that 80-85%, that's what I'm trying to say. There's a little bit of difference with him being a hermit, but with that last point, that's in line with what Ryan Johnson is saying. Think of it like this. At the end of Last Jedi, doesn't he redeem himself? Yeah. And he's willing to sacrifice himself for the rebellion. He was willing to die. Okay. Because he he would not fight his father. And, well, I mean, he ended up having to, but you get what I'm saying. He didn't want to fight his father, and he wasn't going to turn to the dark side. And he kind of, he wanted to be in the rebellion, to be with his friends, but he also had a responsibility. He he threw himself into the rebellion. Ends up flying a ship, and he ends up destroying the Death Star. Okay, okay. So, you you got some valid arguments. Ryan Johnson is somewhat correct but i will say this i you have to agree with him didn't the marketing the marketing was a little strange in that what do you mean by that like well in the trailer remember they, they kind of they kind of show him like training ray and then next thing you know he's like the jedi must die so it's kind of like confusing it, it is and it's tr- it obviously it's trying to get you to the movie theater we're gonna go anyways oh you know what i forgot to tell you a patient of mine told me this today go ahead it made me think of you Oh, here we go. We're talking about movies. She's like, what have you watched new lately? What do you recommend? Which that makes me feel honored. Someone wants like, to know. Car accident. <laughs> I t- that's what I told her. I told her we, were in a, we got in a car accident. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Long story short, you guys already know. I might be getting a new car tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Woo-hoo. Anyways. So, she goes, uh, yeah. She goes, I think I'm going to go to the movies this Christmas, but I don't know what to watch. I'm kind of bummed. And I go, why? There's no Star Wars. <gasps> I'm like, yes! oh my God, I'm like, get out of here. I'm feeling myself right now. <laughs> and I go, are you serious? And she goes, what? I go, my boyfriend said to cancel Christmas this year. <laughs> yes. Because there's no Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yes. She goes, well, we got so accustomed to having a Star, Star Wars, Wars every year we... for Christmas. Yes. Now Christmas doesn't feel the same. And I'm like, no. no. Yeah, exactly. You did the, re- you did the Revenge of the yeah, Sith. Yeah, yeah, I did. No. Yeah, I'm like, oh, my God, why? And so, 
I was like, oh, I have to tell him you said this. He's going to be so happy. Actually, are we canceling Christmas? We're spending it with your mother, so I don't think so. I might have to lure her. <laughs> Chris is like, don't do that. Don't no. you dare. Um, and so I told her, you can go see Mary Poppins, and she laughed at me. I want to see Mary Poppins, but, you know, and, and this is nothing against, like, for you, it, it's, it, I'm not going to lie, it is, I'll, Mary I'll be honest, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be lying if I said that. Out of all the films, Mary Poppins would be the closest I'm going to get to, like, having a pretty good Christmas, because it's something of nostalgic for me. I want to see Aquaman, don't get me wrong, that's, that's the movie I'm going to be gunning for, or Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, but, um, yeah, that, that is true. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm not alone. Because you shouldn't be alone on the holidays, even if you don't have a Star Wars. What do you think? I mean, do you believe that it's... What do you think? Is it 100% in line with the original... I don't know. I is his I Luke the same I Luke from the original trilogy? I wouldn't necessarily say 100%, but maybe like 70. Okay. Why is that? Well, you know, come on. You had ripes against Luke, too. You're like, what's his deal? He just seemed like a grumpy old man. A bitter. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you know what? I'm thinking of this, too. Maybe I'm surprised you didn't bring this up, but, you know, not being happy with Luke, we're saying, how could he not come out of his hiding when Han died? Yeah. Even though he, well, the thing he is. He didn't know. He didn't know. So that was, but but people expected him to but know. But I'm just surprised he didn't come out for his sister. That is true. You know, like, especially what you just said, like, he, you're right. He was a little irrational, and he did just, he's very impulsive. Yeah. And when he found out that Han was dead, he didn't rush to his sister's side. So that's how he's not the same. That's how that differentiates the Lukes. Mm, okay, see, that's exactly. <laughs> but uh, I, I think we can agree at this. Yeah. It, it may not be 100%, but I think it's it's pretty close. I can't believe literally almost a year later, we're still talking about, we're still talking we're about still talking this. We're still talking about the best damn Star Wars whoa, movie that's ever whoa, came whoa, out. I can't whoa, believe this. Whoa, whoa. The best new Star Wars since... The original trilogy, oh, Last Jedi, no. is Empire Strikes Back, and nobody wants to believe no. it. Sorry, Pat, I have to no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I don't, I don't know. No, no. I can't. No, I don't agree with you. <laughs> no, <laughs> stop it. I don't okay. like it. You're not the same, Patrick. <laughs> well, it's not the same, Luke. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, Why is it every time we're in the freaking outer rim, there's controversy in their statements that are said? We get, we're getting claps over here. Getting claps in the background because it's true. <laughs> and I can say, and I think you can say that the one thing we can agree at is we will be seeing Ryan Johnson at the bar because we're not done talking about this. Yeah, and hopefully he can bring some of his porg friends. Oh yeah, be great. I love the porgs. Actually, if anything. The greatest thing Ryan Johnson ever did for Star Wars was bringing the Porgs into fruition because they are awesome. Chris is pulling out a Porg right now. Or you can't have the Porgs without the Last Jedi, so you have to acknowledge it. What's your favorite Star Wars film since the original trilogy? One hundred percent. Since the original trilogy, I'm just curious. Mine's Last Jedi slash. I don't know. Cause you really love Rogue One. I love. Yeah, I remember. Do you remember when we saw Rogue One and I walked out and I said, "This movie." It's better than The Force Awakens. And I remember getting so much shit about it from everyone. What are you talking about? That movie's nothing compared to The Force Awakens. I'm like, just wait till 2017 because Ryan Johnson's going to put out the best Star Wars. And I was right. What was your favorite uh, Star Wars? I mean, you like Rogue One a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Or is it The Force? I think it's The Force Awakens, right? It is. Yeah, it's The Force Awakens with you. Um, I think the reason why is it's it was nice to get a bigger female presence. Oh, yeah. For Star Wars. A lot of people I mean, aren't happy about that either. Well, they can go... You suck a big one. That's yeah. what I say. But not, no, just not only that, like, Star Wars is so inspirational, and it's touched so many people's lives. But one of the things that I don't... I, I wanted to see more of, and I feel like we've gotten the new movies, is a stronger female presence and a female lead. Mm. I mean, we had Princess Leia, and she was a great start to female empowerment, you know, we had Padme. She was great, too. But it was nice to she see Rey. She chose any. No, I was kidding. <laughs> but it was nice yeah. to see Rey in the forefront. And then you get Jyn Arso. Exactly. And then now people are saying that they would love to see more of Kira yes. from Solo. Yes. She was really pretty bad. She was she, not only badass, but she was smart. Yes. And I think that and her so character I was, feel like, was survive, I feel like for surviving. me, this is a new Star Wars generation. And you have to roll with the times, man. But I do love the Porgs. Without The Last Jedi, I wouldn't have a little Porg right next to me. I know. Me. The Porgs are basically the new Ewoks, right? 
<laughs> Patrick. But that is, uh, is that it? That's, that's so all I guess I we're gonna, we'll go to the bar with Ryan Johnson yeah, right now. We'll meet him I'd up love right to now. talk to him about this because I love The Last Jedi, but I'm not backing down from my statements. But that's it for us. We're going to head out of the outer rim. Next, we have a movie review. It's been a while since we put a movie review. You know, out. this movie review is like well needed. We've actually had it sitting in the can. We have a couple of reviews in actually the, in the can. I think it was in the can right before a car accident. I just it stalled was. everything. Yeah. So yeah. we have a movie review for you. We did Bohemian Rhapsody. The Queen biopic. This film was about the life of Queen. And, and Freddie Mercury. And Freddie Mercury. And about how they came about and everything. This film was directed by Brian Singer, which was the uh, director of like the first several X-Men films. The reason why I'm saying this is because I don't think we mentioned this. Mm-hmm. In, I don't think we did. Yeah, and usually we give you the basics. But we did this with a special guest, Grinch Hands. Now, Grinch Hands is one of our premier listeners who's been with us for almost a year, too. Yeah. Might have to get them on there when it's their year. <laughs> But uh, Grinch Hands, we've been wanting to get on. They are... We had the privilege of meeting them in Houston when we did Pandemic Tour. Yeah, episode 43, The Grinch That Rocked Pandemic Tour. Yes, they gave yes, them that title. Yes. Uh, Grinch Hands is huge in the film. Yes. And we love their tweets. They have some oh, hilarious, hilarious tweets. hilarious. And you're going to hear us say this again verbatim because, you know... Grinch Hands rocks. Yeah. So go ahead right now and listen to the Bohemian Rhapsody movie review with our special guest... Grinch hands. hands. Oh. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to review Bohemian Rhapsody that yes. we saw, but we have a special guest. I'll let Krista go ahead and take over. Our special, I know what to say really quick. So Our go. special guest for today is Grinch Hands. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> now, Grinch Hands is our uh, Uber listener. Yes. Um,. So, you actually, one of the ten listeners. I know, one of our <laughs> one of our ten listeners that listen to us. Um, now you found us through hashtags on Twitter, right? Yes, yeah, I, I, I. Well, actually, I kind of, kind of, because I was looking at the Star Wars hashtag, <laughs> and I think that's how I found you guys because I wanted to to learn like stuff, and then I found one of the content that that was hashtag with Star Wars and Chewbacca. I was like, oh, hmm. <laughs> so I clicked on your review. I mean your your podcast, and I heard the review from Mother. That's what hooked me. Oh God! Was, like yeah, it was like two words long, which is like how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad at Patrick for that movie. Oh, Mother! I actually wanted to see it again no. just because I couldn't believe that's no. what I had saw. I was just yeah. astonished. But uh, it didn't. Did it get a Rossi? Has the, have the Rossi already happened? I don't know. You know what those are, right? For like the worst movies. Oh, the Razzies? Or yeah. is it called Razzies? I don't know. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure it won a bunch, right? Probably. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that one movie probably won a lot too. Flatliners. Remember that oh, movie? The God, remake? Oh, that was oh, bad. Man, I, I, heard that I didn't watch it. I know it was bad. But uh, yeah, so yeah, Grinch Hands has been uh, prominent in our history of our podcast. And then yeah, we met them we- at. Pandemic tour in Houston. We did, and pretty sure the listeners have heard us, men- us mention Grinch Hands. It got to the point where Patrick was like, can you stop talking about Grinch Hands on the episode? Because no one else is going to want to listen to us when all you do is rave about them. Well, I mean, I love Grinch Hands too, but I was just like, someone's going to be on here going, nobody cares about me. <laughs> nobody cares about me. But that's but that's just because I, I did counter if you do listen to back on those episodes that nobody else makes themselves known. It's not my fault. Yeah, it's not my fault they interact with us. I've been wanting to get Grinch Hands on here because yeah. they love movies. They do. And I their do. tweets are hilarious. So Thank as you. soon as we are uh, done with this review, I'm going to have them plug in that Twitter because it's 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 one of the hottest Twitters out there. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I, get a, I, I chuckle quite I a bit. I always laugh at your tweets. I'm like, oh, she's such a savage. <laughs> I saw that. The, the Henry Cavill one, I think, was, like, the one that got the most attention recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I am uh, definitely there to just speak my thoughts, so let it be known. And I love it. But, um, you. you want to go ahead and, you want to get into Bohemian Rhapsody, Chris? Yeah, so, um, Green Chance, I'm going to let you open this up. Uh, this is our spoiler-free section. So, for those of you listening, if you have not watched the movie, you can listen up till we say the spoiler part. Then, please stop listening. Go watch the movie. 
come back and listen to the rest of it. Or if you want the movie to be spoiled, <laughs> keep listening, I guess. Yeah, or go to Wikipedia. And- That's true. True, true, true. <laughs> All right. So what were your initial thoughts on the movie? So I went in as a Queen fan, mostly. Grew up listening to their music. My mom was a huge Freddie Mercury fan. Oh. So the expectations were high. Oh. I should not I should not have had them that high. <laughs> in fact <laughs> I, uh, in fact I think I I did enjoy the movie. Like you do get you get the music that it's, you know, amazing. Like overall. The the actors, in my opinion, did what they could. But since they use the same formula that the biopics have been using, I mean, I love biopics. Don't get me wrong. Me too. But it was it didn't have organization, in my opinion. So not without that organization, like the formula just doesn't really connect. So when I I got out, I was like, eh, eh, I liked it. I enjoyed that. It I was entertained. But if you would have looked at this in a generic way, this movie could have been applied to a lot of other bands. Mm. So, I I don't know. I just came out of that movie a little bit in between. Really excited about the soundtrack, for sure. I had listened to it before the, the watching the movie. But, nah, something was missing. But, you know, like, as, as someone that just, like, goes there and sits down and went there for Freddie Mercury, I was like, okay, all right. Like, Rami did what he, what he did. Like, oh, what yeah. he does best. He acted. <laughs> yeah, he was really good. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I agree. Don't interrupt. To that. a certain extent. So I went in, and I don't go in very, very often with high expectations in movies, just because I've had bad experiences in the past. Like what? Um. My mother. Shut up! It's not funny. <laughs> Just movies that I think I just, I, I think I set my expectations too high sometimes, and, and this is one okay. of the movies. That, but I had kind of the opposite effect you of, of, of you. You drank the I, Kool-Aid on this one, I you? drank the Kool-Aid on this one. I was so drunk off of this movie when I walked out. Like, I was, like, all oh, smiles. Yeah. And I was going to Patrick during the movie, because I, I talked during movies. I'm like, look, look, I'm, like, nudging him when the songs are getting created. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know. <laughs> now, I don't know a lot. Obviously, I know who Freddie Mercury is. Okay, I'm like I'm not. I don't live under a rock. Me too. But I don't. Really, I don't really know how. I don't know their history. Me too. Hence is why I'm watching the biopic. You know, and so I come out of this movie. I'm drunk. I love it. I'm raving about it. This guy over here is kind of like meh. It wasn't that good. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I kill their vibe. You're crazy. We're arguing you know, in the like, car we're about arguing it. Arguing in the car about it. And then after the conversation and us arguing for like 30 minutes about the movie, I'm like. Okay, the Kool Aid's wearing off. Well, I had said something to you. I'm yeah. not as drunk as I was walking out of the movie. It's like, oh yeah. Wait a minute, that didn't make sense. It's like, wait a minute, how did? Because I understand there needs to be, you know, jumps in movies. In the timeline, of course. Yes, I mean, I completely get that. Um, I've watched other movies with within the music musical genre that had really bad jumps. Now that one was confusing. So I was kind of comparing it to that movie, yeah. and I'm like, no, oh. um, I watched the, the last five years with Anna Kendricks and Jeremy Jordan. It's, oh, from Supergirl. Uh, yes, and um, it's it's a Broadway show that they made into a movie a couple I saw years the movie ago. With you. You're like, That's confusing. Though. <laughs> you convinced? I saw the movie with you. Those time jumps, they kept going back and forth, and you were like, well, wait a minute, which timeline is this? And one. I didn't feel like it was like that, but I feel like they kind of skipped out. On the sandwich. That makes sense. Like, you got more bread, not enough meat. Oh, that's a good one. I thank like you. That. Thank you. Um, And so, but I, I didn't notice, I didn't think about it until I was processing the movie later after our 30-minute argument. And I was like... It was getting a little intense. I was, it was. I was like, what are you... I was like yelling at him, what are you talking about? I'm like, you're cuss. crazy. And then I'm like, maybe I'm the crazy one after, you know, I like calmed down a little bit. And I was like... <laughs> that doesn't make sense but overall <laughs> i enjoyed the movie it definitely could have been better but like my yeah. first initial reaction it was like super high and then now that i've had time to like process and think about it i'm like okay now i see patrick's argument now okay they are valid like how did this happen that made no sense but overall I enjoyed it. I love Rami Malek. I think this is, um, see, he does more TV, right? He's on Mr. Robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You watched that, right? 
I watched the first I, season and I loved it. What I, about you, Grinch Hands? I've seen it all. Oh, yeah, I'm like, no, no, I, I know Grinch Hands likes the show. Yeah. You should watch I, it. I actually, uh, a little bit of a plug-in, but <laughs> Mr. Robot does have an ARG alter- alternate reality game every season, and every season I've been able to solve it with the help of the Reddit community, of course, but I'm as active as I am on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Every time that the Mr. Robot uh, season happens, so yep. What? I mean, uh, what? I I wish I was as cool as you. All I can say <laughs> is I saw the first season on Amazon, and then I go, "It's really good," and I'll watch the second season, and I forgot. <laughs> I don't solve the puzzles. Nothing. I just was like, "This show's really good." Like. So, I mean, for him, I, I, I think this was a, a definite, like, you know, breakout role. Um, but the movie itself was, I mean, if, if you take away, like, the music and his performance, exactly. it's kind of blah. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> so, in the end, our 30-minute argument, Patrick was right. And that kills me to say that I was wrong and Patrick was right. So, uh, it's not about being right. I think we, I think all three of us have exceptional movie taste. I was expecting to walk out of Venom all drunk, like, yeah, it's the best movie I've ever seen, but instead I was like, oh, I was so freaking disappointed. It was the worst hangover I ever had. I was like, this this can't be Tom Hardy. But, um, yeah, I think our movie taste is really good, so, you know, sometimes it, it takes... Some movies we know are good, and some yeah. of them you're like, oh, it was really good, and then you're like, well, it wasn't that good. With this movie, it reminds me of when I go to Panda Express, using your sandwich thing, I thought of this. It's like when I go to Panda Express, I want it, and then I walk out going, I wish I had more. <laughs> I always do that every time I go to Panda. And and the only difference between Panda and Bohemian Rhapsody is they're not they're not upcharging me on everything. I, every time I go to Panda, I'm always like, ooh, let me get this honey shrimp. They're like, oh, that's extra. This movie didn't give me anything extra except in the performance of Rally, or uh, Ram- 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 was it? Rally? R- Rami or is Rami. It Rami Malik? Rami. Okay. Yeah. Why am I getting all You're missing that? the names. Yeah, I'm like, it's because of honey shrimp. No, but, <laughs> but um. No, uh, he. This is his best performance. I think oh, yeah. that Mr. Robot was like the was like the first audition, and then this right here is it, he can only get bigger. I mean, he nailed Freddie Mercury down to it, like to everything. I thought he was really good, but the problem is the rest of the movie, like you two have said, after the music and his performance. Actually, I like the Queen uh, band members too. They were pretty good. Yeah, uh, everyone was pretty good in this movie. But after that, I just was like, because uh, they kept time jump to the point where I'm like, okay, like let me breathe a little bit so I can understand what made Queen and especially Freddie Mercury, you know, these these iconic people who made bold choices, yeah. who didn't care what anybody else thought, and they changed history of music. Instead, I just was going, okay, so they just time jumped to this other part. What, what the hell's going on here? And that, that's why you kept looking over and you were getting more disappointed because I kept giving you, you a face. You, like, you had this like puzzle looked on your face and I'm like, I don't understand. Why are you so puzzled? It's like Jay this Edgar. This movie's though. awesome. You know what J- I mean? Jay Edgar, Jay Edgar was really good performance yeah. by DiCaprio. The story was pretty good. The yeah, time jumping drove me nuts. You know, to the point I'm just like, just time jump me out of this movie. <laughs> See, <laughs> you're stupid. See, I'm going to compare this to Walk the Line, because I... I love that movie. I love that movie. Yeah. Like, I could never get tired of watching that movie. And I feel like this movie had the potential to be a walk... Like, you say Walk the Line, people were like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, now when you say Bohemian Rhapsody, I'm kind of curious to see how people are going to react. Like, oh... What's a, worst, what's a really bad, like, music biopic? Um, all, all Eyes on Me with Tupac? Can we, I, you know, that I bad? Didn't, I didn't watch it. Yeah, but that hurt, it looked yeah. terrible. You know, it's funny. As, as soon as you say that, I'm looking over at my movie collection. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Let's see. Right, don't get away from the mic. Okay. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, that that's just how I thought about the film. It was just a Panda Express day for me. I went in, and I was really excited, and I walked out going, I could have had more. You know, I think one of the funniest things is Patrick did not realize... Oh, how yeah. much Queen he really knew. Yeah. And when they did Fat Bottom Girls, I was all yes. excited. And he goes, yes. he goes, I did not know. They did this song? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Fat yeah. Bottom Girls is iconic, as iconic as it will get. You know, I'll, <laughs> see, and there you go. So, right there, somebody who doesn't know uh, Queen as well as, like, you two knew Queen a little bit more than I did. I'm walking this movie expecting to get a. I'm expecting to get lectured in a in an awesome class, and yeah. I walked out going, "Why did I even take this for the first semester?" Like that's all I felt like because you two knew more about it. Like if it came, if it was something like straight out of Compton, Chris will tell you, like I, I will know everything about that. But you know what's funny is you actually used that in your argument straight out of Compton, and I told you 
You know, I remember watching the movie. That was a good one. I don't remember it. Did you like that one, Green Chance? Which one? Uh, Straight Out of Compton. Oh, actually, funny story. It's on my watch list. I have not gotten around to it. But I know that uh, that considering my research, I may like it. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't want to go into with like into it with expectations, you know. <laughs> oh no no. I need- no, it's all it's all good. Yeah, no, I I think you'll like it. I thought it was really good. See, that was my argument was that Straight Out Compton also does some tweaking of the story. I don't want to, you know, I'm not going into spoilers, but yeah. you know, this film, Bohemian Rhapsody, did some tweaking of of the the actual history of the story, which I didn't yeah. necessarily agree with. Uh, <laughs> but Straight Out Compton didn't bother me as much because there's a part in Straight Out Compton that they just ignored because of controversy with Dr. Dre, because um, no. but. They didn't. They didn't talk about it. Where Bohemian Rhapsody, I felt like sometimes they 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 kind of wanted to change the course of history. Like they had the Infinity Gauntlet, and they wanted to snap away some of the details. Well, why don't we jump into the spoiler section so you can use some um, examples? Okay. Um, Is there anything else any of us have to say in the non-spoiler section? No. Let's move on. Let's yeah. move on. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you two go because uh, you know, so I can gather my thoughts. I think. I think. <laughs> For me, and and this is like I don't have a lot of criticism on the movie, but this is the really? one. No, this Uh-oh. is this is the one moment where I'm like, when did this happen? Oh, okay, is yeah. when did his drug addiction and drinking problem come into effect? Like all of a sudden, they're they're making records, they're touring, and then he shows up to the studio high and drunk. It's like when did this happen? Like I was totally confused. Well, use the use the analogy that you use with the uh, DC and Marvel. So. I feel like this movie took the DC effect. Now, everyone knows I like DC, but I am a Marvel person at heart. I'm, I'm Marvel brainwashed, according to Patrick. But the one of my examples is I'm Justice League. I did not know much about Cyborg because I don't know much about DC characters. And there was, I can't remember the exact scene, but there was one part in Justice League that involved a uh, Cyborg. And I remember looking over to Patrick, I'm like, I don't get this. What does this mean? He explained it to me, and I'm like, oh, well, why didn't they just explain this in the movie? He's like, because they expect you to know. And I feel like there are parts of this movie that they didn't fill in correctly. They just kind of went over, and they expect you, the audience, to fill it in. And I did not like that. You're talking about his origin. That's what you're, you're asking me. I can't remember, again, I can't remember the exact details of a year ago, okay? It's been a while. Okay, well. Well, you're talking about the part where in Batman vs. Superman, they had those little video clips with the logos, which was so stupid. And remember, you saw his dad opening the mother box, and then he, he, he was, he was dead or something, and then he started, he started screaming. Yeah. You were asking me, is, how come they didn't talk about his origin? And remember, I had said yeah, to you. Yeah, there you go. It was that, something like that again. Well, besides Warner Bros. wanting to cut some of the Snyder cut, it also, they kind of expected you to kind of. Just know. I guess kind of figure it out, and- yeah. I, I feel like in this movie, and, and that's my one, like, prime example, is I feel like they just expected you to know what happened. So, Green Chance would have been the one that, like, they would have known. Yeah. You would have maybe known. I would have been totally in the dark. I mean, I know the music. I don't know their history. And so, I, I use the the Selena biopic as an example. Ooh, they did a yeah. really good job telling the story but her dad did have a hand in the movie and he he did handle some like when selena and chris went to get eloped he, they they kind of sugarcoated a little bit of that i feel like and yeah. i feel like this movie did the same thing and i hate that but i didn't know any of that until i read stuff later and patrick gave me details later and i'm like <laughs> wtf what do you mean that didn't happen i'm like well, why they tell that in the movie for and then again i started digesting and getting upset and i'm like oh my god i was so drunk off of this movie and now like i need to watch it again just to see it and get like my like i have like my review like my 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 rating but it's like i feel like i was lied to wow yeah <laughs> Wow. What, yeah. about, what about you, Green Chance? So, I agree about the the whole, like, missing details. Uh, for me, like, there were some things that, like, I knew there were some some that I didn't. Like, I didn't know about the, the drug addiction whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I know that it's categorized as biopic slash drama, so I don't know what, what's true and what's not in that sense, you know? I I know about the, the band forming, like, rather quickly but like the way that they portrayed it in the movie like oh what's up guys your vocalist just lost mm-hmm. so i'm in now was kind of like 
I don't know. It, it just, it didn't sit well with me okay. in the way that, well, yeah, like, I like that this is where I go back to the organization because it's not necessarily the way that I, I would have put it if had I been the one putting pieces together, you know? Not to say that I have any experience on that, but to try to make it understand an audience, like, you definitely have to give details. Like, we're, we're talking, like, about the whole world. Like, sure, like, Queen was iconic, but you need to explain some things. You need to explain, you need to explain how it is that they actually got their, their, their biggest break. Not like, oh, yeah, suddenly we got it. I got the call. Here's what's going on. And I, I know that the movie was focusing on the lead, like, leading up onto the concert, but I don't know. There were some parts where I wish, like, when they're getting big and, you know, they're, they're coming up with the songs and they're touring and they're going to t- the TV spots, like, I like that. But had they started somewhere there and, like, told us something else, like, okay, the band has been established, this is what's going on. If it's a Queen movie, you're supposed to explain the whole band. And it just felt like, uh, I don't know. I, it, it just... <laughs> It didn't make sense at some, at some point. Huh. That's actually a good point. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't focus too much on the others. No, it, I feel yeah. like it, it focused more on Freddie Mercury. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a star. But I, I know, but yeah. but the other guys are part of the band. They even remind you of that, like when they're doing that press conference, that the band members are kind of tired and everybody's just asking Freddie the, the questions. But like, I get it. That's the way it was. But come on, give give the whole queen perspective like what about the other guys like how were they actually feeling not just like have them look around and like not go forward with that like we don't actually get to hear their feelings until kind of the end when, yeah. when, when, they're, yeah. um, when they're fed up yeah yeah like they saw the movie too <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i actually yeah i agree with green chance because you know Actually, thinking about it now, it seems like you remember Knocked Up. I keep like using references. It yeah. reminds me of Knocked Up, where where Seth Rogen's talking to Catherine Heigl's character, and then in the background making their stupid jokes and their stupid gestures. That's how I felt the band members were throughout the whole movie. Is that they're mostly there for comic relief, like the whole thing about making a song about the van and how much she loved the va- the van, and then the other guy's hair, and then the random time jump, and there's another guy in the group, and I'm like. Oh, he's there too. How did that guy get into the uh, the uh, the um the bass player? How did he get? How did he get into the group? I don't know. I, I, no I, idea. Actually. actually, all of a sudden he showed up. Like, oh, we know this guy, and he came in. Well, like, because Grinchens was talking about the band formation. Yeah. And I had read. Yeah. Now I'm not. I, I'm assume you know this was a this was a legit outlet, but I was reading some fact checking, and they were saying that Freddie Mercury had lived with with I think two of the members already, and then. One of them had dated Mary, and how he met Mary wasn't exactly how it was. So then I started getting, like, more pissed off about this movie. And that's why I was telling you. I was like, dude, this makes no sense. Why are they changing <laughs> history? Like, is that what made Queen iconic was that they refused to just do the formula and be the norm. They wanted to do things differently and yeah. rewrite yeah. history. So why are we rewriting history? Why, why in, are we rewriting their history? Yeah, in a yeah. sugar-coated sense. Like, I just didn't understand that. That, that That's was kind of mind-boggling because I believe that some of the Queen members were were producers heavily involved in this film and I'm like why are you changing history like but then but then you and I had a conversation and after our 30 minute argument <laughs> uh, he's like if, if someone made a, a biopic about you wouldn't you want them to be truthful and I'm like oh, to a certain extent there's some events in my life I don't think everybody knowing okay <laughs> You don't, you don't want to spill spill the tea on yourself. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, uh, me. You know, like when when sports yeah. when like a football team wins the Super Bowl and they drench the coach. Yeah, just drench me. I don't care. Tell my story how it is because I always find but that see, not not everyone is that open. Well, I think that's what made Walk the Line really good. Was yeah. we got to see they did Johnny. Or, they didn't sugarcoat any. Yeah, walking Phoenix is playing Johnny Cash. who had this huge addiction, and then you know Reese Witherspoon's. Uh, what was what was her name again in the well, June 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 Carter yes June Carter yeah exactly it's been a while oh but my god you, but you get what I'm saying though like remember that whole scene where she had the, she went to his house and she she was like you're gonna get you're gonna get taken care of like they didn't sugarcoat it he was a mess yeah you know I mean like yep. that's why I'm like why is it 
Bohemian Rhapsody showcasing some some of this stuff, and their time jump into the point where it's like, I think one of the problems is I think you argued with me on this one, Chris. It was yeah. When Freddie does his first performance with the band, mm-hmm. and he struggles, but then picks himself up, yeah, and they kind of roll with it, and then the next scene, you know, I think they kind of they have like some scenes in between, but then it kind of moves toward them getting stranded in the van, and then they're gonna end up they're gonna get a record deal. They have yeah. to sell the van, and I was telling Chris that I thought that they should have focused a little bit, uh, just a little bit, about showing why Freddie Mercury was one of the best musical performers of all time because. That was a crucial moment to me. And my argument, my rebuttal <laughs> of that is they did. They did show you like of what seconds. kind of performer. He was struggling with the mic, and he broke the fucking mic stand, dude. And he made the performance his own. And that right there showed you the, the performer. Fred- Frederick Mercury commanded your attention when he was on the stage. You were captivated More than by 10 him. seconds, though. But they, they still did it. True, but I'm just saying that those things kind of bother me, I guess. Oh, my God. That's all I'm saying. And it's just my opinion, like I said. If <laughs> Right there. He was born on that stage, right? In that moment when he broke that mic stand and he had his little tambourine thing, whatever that thing is called. That was awesome. You know, like, but th- that, that right there, that was your way of saying, hey, th- he's a he's a superstar. He didn't, yeah, let, like, he didn't let his mic stand right. get in his way. Well, yeah. I'm going to go spill the tea on my own. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I agree with you. I understand the, the other side of the argument, but I just, I guess for me... I, it wasn't enough. You 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 yeah. wanted more. You want to know what, what... Because, like... What drove his passion and what... Yeah, because look at his other... Perf- I mean, when yeah. I was watching his other performances, I sometimes forgot it was a movie. I was like, I just want to watch... I just want to watch Rami Malek play Freddie Mercury. I just want to yeah. watch that because I was like, that's awesome. You know, and, and, and stuff like that. But, uh... What did you guys? Uh, what did you two think of them when they were crafting the songs? Like, did you like the I process? I thought it was of cool. Yeah. Okay. What was that? Go ahead, Good Chance. Oh no, I was just going to say my favorite one was when when they come up with the, another one bites the dust because you have all this argument and yes. whatnot. I was like, is that really happened? You know what? Put it to the band because that was. You know, one of the the first songs that I heard from them, so it, it was kind of nice to to see the the movie recreated, and that's how it went down. <laughs> that's the one song Patrick got so hyped yeah, that's my for. Favorite song about them. Yeah, he was like, he's like, his song's badass. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> Uh, that was that was probably my favorite one of how they created the song. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was really cool. Yeah, I don't know why. I just felt like that one. I knew that one got the most attention because it's, it's is it would would, it, would that be their biggest song, Bohemian Rhapsody, or is it just because of the title? They because I felt like they really focused on that one more than anything. But I understood well, why because it was like, different. I feel like that song changed, or according to the movie, I don't know. But I feel like that. I feel like that song changed their their whole career. Oh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. But, yeah, I just, I liked it. I just feel like uh, sometimes we got, like, that one they focused a lot on. And, and then, then we other got, ones, not as yeah, much. like, high yeah. bass player. I didn't know you were in this band, and nobody cares about you. Let's- it just it just wasn't well-balanced. And, and like Grinch had said, it, it, it wasn't, or- the storyline wasn't organized. Yeah, because, like, there's another part. I could just, I'm not trying to nitpick, but there's another part yes, that bothered are. me. <laughs> Stop being a film bro. No. <laughs> oh, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> that crossed the line. Um, no, there's another part that really, maybe because Grinch Hand's a little bit more familiar. Okay. One part that really bothered me was we get to see him with his mustache and he's looking at this, I think it's a painting or, or that the he photo. has. The photo. Photo he has. And he's with one of the other members and we're, sh- and it's, and we're slowly understanding that they're a time jump, but there's a, there's a disconnect between the band and him. Yeah. They've all kind of moved on with their lives. They've and gotten he's, married and settled he's still down struggling a little bit. With, yeah. yeah, he's still struggling with uh with himself and i just was like i, I kind of wanted to know more about this disconnect see that was those are little pieces right there that i felt like they could have fixed like they would have added an extra i know that some people don't like two and a half hour movies but i'm just like if if you were already this, at 215 this, just go ahead and do this, this would have benefited yeah, just, the extra 15 minutes yeah it would have helped me connect the dots but yeah. i mean i still like the movie like i said uh i think rich hands is right all the performances is you know it's amazing it's, you know it's it's it commands my attention does anybody else have anything to say I could nitpick all day. Attention, like Freddie Mercury. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about. <laughs> okay, I go usually ahead. moderate after a while because I feel like just because it's easier. Is let's talk about the uh, the lead up to the Live Aid because I hated. Was it Paul? I hated Paul. I hated Paul. Paul was an ass. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. And I, I was sick of them. Yeah, agreed. So I, was, I was just going to say that it was pretty interesting how they kind of depicted that whole sexuality spectrum because you have, you know, like the whole Mary. I don't want to say that they wanted to show, like, Mary was his, like, balance, like, what was bringing him back from wherever, like, he was going toward to. Because, like, you know, like, having <laughs> having the parties with the drugs and, like, uh, all the gay men. And I don't know, I didn't like that they necessarily depicted that as negative because as far as I know, the gay community loved the Queen era. Oh, yeah. I know that they were super influenced and they weren't necessarily doing bad things, you know? So, like, to see the drugs, to see this gay guy, like, actually, like, bringing him to the dark side, basically, but, like, Mary pulling him out nice in a way, reference. like, oh, your, your band needs you. I don't know, it just seems a little bit... A little bit too sad for me. I don't know. I, to some extent, I want to know, like, what's real in, in that sense. I want to know if, like, may, maybe Freddie was the, the the one that actually realized, like, oh, I, I want to go back to, to what was going on. Or, like, something actually, like, worse happened in, in the, the lifestyle that he was, like, living. But not necessarily, like, you know, because of Paul. But I don't know. I, I thought Paul was a bad character super irrelevant at first and somehow he became irrelevant yeah <laughs> i didn't want him to but that was bad <sighs> does anybody want to talk about how paul wound up littlefinger the guy owns everybody in game of thrones by winding them up and this guy over here ones ones up him in bohemian rhapsody i'm just crossing genres but oh my god uh, i do <laughs> but i i agree with i, I agree with yeah I, agree with I actually agree with you 100 percent on that that that's actually really interesting. And also... I didn't think of it that way. I don't way. know if I told you this. Yes. But Freddie Mercury's sexuality... Yeah. I felt that they sugarcoated it. I I know that they're yeah, trying to cater yeah. to all audiences. Yeah. I yeah. don't care. Cause, Show it. Because it makes some people uncomfortable, though. Mm. But, it's real but, life. But it's the truth. Exactly. Yeah. It's part of the identity of Queen. Yeah. yeah. So, to, that's why I kept... Remember I kept telling you, I'm like, like, when they're making out, I'm like, are we gonna see... Are we gonna... Are they gonna... Because they were... Like, I felt like they were tiptoeing around... Some parts, if that makes sense. Like, his curiosity, I understand them tiptoeing around, but I felt like, you know, his, his relationships outside of Mary, they were kind of uh, sugarcoating it. Except with that Jim Hutton, the yeah. one he ended mm-hmm. up with. That one was, was pretty organic to me, and I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh... I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I just I was going to agree that they definitely sugarcoated a lot of it, because at the end of the day, like, when you think or like what everybody thinks about Freddie Mercury that's like one of the biggest things that they remember like oh yeah the, the, he was a big part of the gang he was really big in the community he he was known you know so eh, yeah sugar coating wasn't my favorite they just need to remake this whole movie. Right now, right? They just, you know, especially in, in in today's time, that Freddie Mercury story, I honestly thought would be even more inspiring, especially what he had to deal with in in decades before now. I mean, that's why I was like, what is going on here? That's what makes biopics, uh, music biopics, in my opinion, inspiring. Like Walk the Line, and I don't know why. Selena, I, can't, I have uh, okay, Selena, I have arguments against, but yes, you can. Fuck off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't say it was a bad movie. It was. She is my idol. I would okay? say uh, okay, but you get what I'm saying. But like you no, walked no, yeah, out inspired yeah, yeah. with Selena. But I think um, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm so sorry. No, no, but you but, get what I'm saying, but, though, right? But this is something I told you oh, in no. our in our 30 minute argument that no one will ever hear. Um, I'm not leaking. <laughs> is in a sense you're also introducing a new generation. Yes. To this wonderful music, but not not only that, this incredible incredibly inspired inspiring person and group and group and in a sense to it's okay to embrace who you are i thought that was the whole point of yeah that's what i always thought about freddie mercury was that he was willing to embrace like who he is and you're different okay great 
You're different. Mm -hmm. Be proud that you're different. Why would you want to blend in with everyone else? Yeah. You know, and so I, I, I think they, they could have took like a different approach. I think they sh- this movie would have benefited from being pushed back a little bit, especially with the, with the whole director. Oh, Brian Singer. Yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even mention that. Yeah. You'll hear me do that in post. That's, yeah. that's a whole nother story. No, 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 not that part. I'm oh. saying like I do the basics. You'll hear me like in post. Oh my God. <laughs> As if we were having that normal conversation. Oh, okay. I forgot. But you know, overall, I mean, if, if you look past that part of it, I mean, if you look at Rami's, performance in the music it was good but it's just it doesn't feel like you know authentic you know what i mean i I feel like i wanted to know more Hmm. but at the same time i understand most people it's hard to get them to sit there for two plus hours unless it's marvel for a movie you know what i mean (laughs) but no but about being serious though like people's attention spans nowadays are, are so small mine included but i have an attention problem so I have an excuse, but I can't sit. I, I can't sit still very long, so like I, I have to be like, you're like doing right now. You're moving yeah, around. and like right now I'm like moving around because like I just I, I can't, and so I I think that's another reason why they kind of like skimped off part of this and shaved off part of the movie. You look like you're making it rain. What do you? What do you, you mean? <laughs> okay, like if you can see the hand gesture. <laughs> oh, be careful. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I think. I think they ended up just kind of shaving part of the movie away, but I think those are necessary parts. All right. Uh, anything else to add, Green Chance, to that? No, I I respect that, and I, I just have one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Relevant to that to say, two-hour movies are becoming so relevant. We might as well prepare for hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a good one. Wow. Please tweet that. <laughs> yes, please tweet that. So I can, re- can I retweet it. So I can retweet it. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. Will... This review, it sounded like we, we we had gripes on the movie on the movie, but it felt like we totally didn't like this movie. So no, I want to I, I want to wrap it. up final thoughts. Okay. Of what you your final thoughts on this film, and then something positive, and maybe some maybe about anything about Ra- Rami Malek. And then we'll we'll give a rating. Grinchan, since you're our guest, you and, get to go first. And hemorrhoids is real. Hemorrhoids are real. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm in the middle. Final thought. Still in the middle. I don't think Rami Malek will be an Oscar contender with this, despite Ooh. how big he did. Wow. Like how well he did, and if he does, uh, I'll be proven wrong. But you know what? <laughs> I I. <laughs> don't think he, he he's gonna get that nod i don't know so i love the soundtrack but still the movie fell flat for me chris was so sad when you said that i had said i think i had some more things i was yeah, like yeah you did um what what percentile would you rank this movie um this is gonna be good <laughs> for all I, of us zero to a hundred percent wise 76 Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Grinch hands and me, are, we <laughs> shut up. That was my that was my initial rating when we did the argument. Was that's okay. I was being generous okay. and I got so much crap from you about it. Let me 76. talk. Let me, let me talk. Oh I can't believe so, it. So my initial rating began. I was like drunk off of the Kool Aid. Okay, <laughs> Listen so to this. like yeah. no one judged me. I can't wait. Um, is it was really like it was like in the high eighties. You said eighty eight. <laughs> I'm going to quote you, 88. <laughs> I couldn't number. believe but it. But I have sobered up since then, okay. and I have digested the movie. Fully? Fully, and even during this conversation, it's making me think, oh, oh, well, yeah, what the heck? You know, kind of thing. And so when she said 76, I'm like, holy shit. Ooh. I was, I, I was going to say 75. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. Are you, but are you giving it a seventy five? Yeah, a seventy five. Why is it that you're giving it a seventy five? Because now? now that I've had time to process and, and I'm not again, I'm not like drunk off of this movie and I've kind of just stepped back a little bit and kind of really analyzed everything. Again, if if you take away Rami's performance, which I hope he gets nominated for an Oscar. I was making a sad face and you said no. Just because Sorry. I feel like he, just all of his mannerisms was like down to a T. Like I was watching a video on YouTube that showed his performance next to Freddy's and it, like literally they were moving. I was like, oh my goodness, you know? And so I feel like 
he put so much into this performance. It makes me sad if he does not get an Oscar nod. But the movie itself, it's it, it, it's average, you know. There's but hope for the Golden Globes. There's always hope for the Golden that's, Globes. That's what that was his argument in the car. Is he might get a Golden Globe <laughs> nod. You know, the Golden Globes love musicals. Oh yeah. <laughs> But oh. the music is what really kind of just... That's part the of the The music film. and his performance. Now, don't get me wrong. I know I keep raving about his performance. The other the other actors are good. And but he steals the show. Oh, yeah. He steals the show. It was... Man. Yeah. And so that's... From the guy from Need, Need for Speed. I don't remember him from Need for Speed. You keep saying that. No, I don't remember. I do. Um, <laughs> I But that that's the reason why I jumped down from like an 88 to 75 is really kind of looking at it the story is not that great wow i told yeah. her i told her that in the and car. then and then patrick told me like how they they this Whoa. is this isn't how this happened and and this and this and i'm like what the heck like well that's a huge disservice to your fans. It is, and that made me and really upset. No, but I was going to yep. tell you. But I do love the movie, and I'm going to own the movie. I'm probably going to watch it again in theaters. I'll watch but, it with you. I don't care. But it just, it just, it makes me a little sad because I think Queen deserved better. Deserved better. Well, I think Freddie Mercury yeah. deserved better because oh, d- he wasn't here to be able to guide this. Not film. just him, but also you know. Well, no, they had a hand in it. So they, this is the film they put out. Okay, so then I'm, Freddie deserved better. Yes, but uh, I was telling her. Uh, Grinchans that I was like, it's okay if you give it an 88. It's your movie review. If it, it seems to hit you in a way it didn't hit Grinchans and myself, there's nothing wrong with that. Then the movie did its job. See, that's what I think the goal is. I walked out of the movie and I was like, <laughs> I feel like I was in like in a concert, man, because we watched it in that. What, we didn't watch Dobie. it in IMAX, Dovey, and it was just so oh, loud. Nice. And I was like, oh man, this movie was awesome. And I'm like, what do you mean you gave it a, a 76? You're crazy. And I was like going <laughs> off and off. And like I said, the more, the more, and even the next day, we uh we drove to Tucson and we were even so arguing about it the next morning because we I was blasting the the soundtrack and I'm like the more he kept talking I'm like shit Patrick's right oh I don't want to tell him he's right because I hate admitting that he's right and I was like okay he has valid points and then it was kind of like it like sunk in I was like oh man. I think you just figured it out for yourself. I did. I, I had nothing to do with it. I think you just thought a, bit, a but, little bit about the movie. And then listening to, to, to Grinch Tent's talk too right now, it's like, okay, damn, they're right. I didn't I didn't see it that way. I think, oh, yeah. again, but again, it's kind of like I was I was drunk. I had my drunk goggles on. I was just so wrapped up in the music and the performance that I didn't really look at the storyline as much, which normally I do. Normally I'm like... I feel like I'm a, I'm a film bro and I critique things. I'm like, film ah, bro. didn't make sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Pat... Mine's a 75. It's your turn. Green Chance is a 76. Okay, so my final thoughts are, whether or not you're a Queen fan, you need to see this film. Oh, yeah. You will enjoy them recreating their classic songs that they were coming up with at the time, but I feel that this is a disservice to anybody, whether you're a new Queen fan, you've never heard of them, or a lifelong one, because they are trying to rewrite history that doesn't need to be rewritten. But Rami Malek is gold, so my rating is actually a 73. Wow. <laughs> it went down. I told you I was being generous with the 76. Yeah. I just think that that what you two said already, that without Rami Malek, without these songs, and without Little Finger getting <laughs> wound up, <laughs> that this film would have been a dud on arrival. But I just think that Rami Malek was like telling me, shut your mouth about my movie, watch me, and he knocked it out of the park, and I was yeah. just like... If only Freddie Mercury could have saw him do uh, his portrayal of him, he would have been amazed. Yeah. He, he probably would have rated an 88 too, Chris, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, uh, that is it for us on uh, Bohemian uh, Rhapsody, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, I actually, I enjoyed this review. This one was uh, this one was really good. Grinch has got to come on more often. I think you did your best work too, Chris. That was Thank fantastic. You. So, And it's not an 88. <laughs> Shut up. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for having me. Well, Grinch hands, but don't don't sign off just yet. Um, for our listeners who enjoyed having Grinch hands on the other nine of you that enjoyed having Grinch hands <laughs> on the episode, um, where can they follow you on social media if they want to? And you see need to all your hilarious tweets. Thanks. So I, I am on the Twitter <laughs> at Grinch underscore hands. Again, that's at Grinch underscore hand i just i'm working on the other social media so that's the only one i'll, yes. I'll plug in for all now. right all right perfect <laughs> i recommend 
If I could do a testimonial, Patrick from Tomorrow Comes Movies, to the nine of you, this is the <laughs> best Twitter account out there. That you might get hemorrhoids from this too because it's that good. <laughs> Compare those cushions. Compare those cushion people. It's those the best. Movies are gonna get you. <laughs> it's the best thing I've seen since Mother. Boom. Oh, my <laughs> Mic God. Drop. Mic drop. Mic drop. But, uh, yeah, thank you, Green Chance, for coming on. Uh, we got to get you back on again yes. for – So, anytime you watch a movie and we haven't hit you up and you're like, hey, I want to talk about this movie, please don't hesitate to text uh, Chris and be like, I want to jump on. Because there's a lot of good movies. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's a lot of good movies Yeah, coming we, got, out. we got Grinch. Yeah. We got uh, Green Book. Oh, yeah, that looks so uh, good. Boy Erased. <laughs> boy Erased. Beautiful Boy. Beautiful boy, mid nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, A twenty four puts out really good movies. I love A twenty four. Yes, so do yeah. I. Yeah. Uh, but thank you to Grinch Hands. Uh, definitely follow them, and you will not regret it. Just make sure you come back to listen to us because you might, you might like it too much and you might forget about us. That counts gold. <laughs> yeah, it is. Galileo. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. That one better. Yeah. That was a lot that was, better. That huh? was good. Yeah, yeah. You lifted your soft yeah. palate the way I told you to. So I should hope, be a vocal coach. I hope you enjoyed that Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. more than you enjoyed the film. Because <laughs> we, no, we no, didn't enjoy no, it as no, much. No, 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 Speak for yourself. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Right? You like the high-kept melody with it, too. No, I like the movie. I like the movie, too. It just wasn't as it good. It just to... where it, my, my drunkness yeah. wore off. As we talked about. Yes. And but I mean it's really good and I really want to see it again. I think everyone should see it because it's one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest bands, one of the and greatest probably, singing artists. You of probably all time. know more Queen songs than, than you, you know. Yeah, as as I found Patrick. out, as evidence, as I found out. Well, Fat bottom girls. Yeah, that was hilarious. But uh, thank you to Grinch Hands for getting on. Please give them a follow. Trust me, it's worth. You're it. in for a ride of constant likes and retweets because they are. I don't. I don't know if I'm hip anymore, but they are fire. Yeah, I think you said that too. Fire. And if you like Grinch Hands, please let us know so we can bring Grinch Hands back because I think that a lot of you are going to want to see Grinch yeah. Hands return. All right, so this is the end of the episode, and my turn. Real quick, Carissa, <laughs> where can they find this podcast on the following platforms if they want to? If you like to listen to this podcast, if you're not already, you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Overcast, Podbean, CastBox, and TuneIn. And we are officially now on, uh, where is it at? So we are also on another platform called Radio Public. Is that new? It's a new one. When did we get on that? Yesterday. Oh! I'm going to shout out the STS guys. They had said they got on there, and I'm like, this is probably a platform that we need to be on. So, shout out to the STS guys. They're yeah. awesome. Yes, they are. You should definitely check them out, but not forget about us. Please don't forget about <laughs> us. Now, if you like to follow us on social media, yes. you can follow us at TOC Movies on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Or go head over to our Facebook page at Tomorrow Comes Movies. You can also subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch at Tomorrow Comes Movies. Um, I believe it is YouTube.com YouTube. Com slash Tomorrow Comes, comes Movies. movies. Twitch.com slash TOC Movies. Or you can just type them in and find us. Now, with our YouTube, what can they find on there, Carissa? You can find our Funko videos. We do unboxings. Hauls. We do hauls. We recently just put up our LA Comic Con haul. And our, our Black Friday haul. Our Black Friday haul. And our Tucson Comic Con will be coming up very shortly, too. And we do unboxings. Um, and we also did our first unboxing video. Those are coming we out this weekend. We did... Um, the mystery box from, from GameStop, GameStop from Black Friday. And the Barnes and & Noble. the Barnes & Noble mystery box. So look forward to that. Or look for that. We also do interviews with celebrities. Voice and artists, actors, and artists, writers. comic artists. Um, we got some on Tucson. We got, oh, we got some on Tucson. We, we got, got some, some from, Tucson? yeah, we got some from Tucson Comic Con. That with, we're finally releasing. Yes, we have some with uh, comic artist writer Travis Hansen. Yes. Uh, comic writer artist Vic Collins. Yep. We have writer Mike DaCosta mm -hmm. and his awesome comic Elite Wear. And we also have a interview with Kevin M. Glover from Scary Tales Publishing. Really cool. Doing some really cool stuff with, with Monster Horror Comics. And this one I can't say well. Let me see if you can help me out. Because Eric M. Esquivel? Esquivel? Esquivel. Esquivel. Eric M. Esquivel. You might know that name if you're big in the comics. He does DC Vertigo's Border Town Comics, which is like really hot right now. And he also does Phantasmagoria, which is about 
Spanish horror lore. What I say is that is that what it yeah. was? Yeah, folk tales that that you you knew some of them. Now we did an interview with those, and we also did one with Tim Rose, aka Admiral Akbar from Star Wars. It's a trap. And we have other interviews as well, if you're interested. So just head over to our YouTube page and check out those videos. Please, if you have not yet, please subscribe. Yeah. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down there Hit below. the bell notification so you know when new videos come out. Same with podcasts. If you hit one of those platforms that Kristen mentioned, you get the episodes immediately. Now, one thing we're going to be doing when we... Uh, we have a couple more special interviews that are coming up soon. Oh, yeah. And so what we're going to do for you guys, our podcast listeners is we're going to put it out on the episode first, and then a week later we'll upload it up to YouTube. So podcast listeners get the exclusive first. Exactly. So listen, you already listened to us, so why, why am I telling you this? But the cool thing is you get to hear these interviews before anybody else. Because as much as we love our YouTube audience, we love our podcasting audience more. All ten of you. <laughs> yeah, all ten of you. So <laughs> all ten of you will get it before the... Whatever number of subscribers we have gets it. But, yeah, we have more interviews in the can. And, you know, we have a lot of content coming out. And uh, every Friday, new episodes are coming out. So this is coming out Friday. And Funko videos will be coming out Sundays. CC. And then from there, we'll see how it goes. But also, real quick, please, if you can, give us a like on Facebook. Give us a rating on iTunes or Stitcher or... Wherever else uh, is available to give us a rating on any of those platforms, please give us a rating, a star rating of your choosing. Whoops, I hit You're that. hitting the mic. Hit chill, that. chill, chill. And we greatly appreciate it. And please help us spread the word. As always, your hosts are the Patrick and... Carissa. To the Grinch, who sang Galileo. Oh, that was really good. Thank you. Episode 55. In tribute to you. Oh. <laughs> I hate you.